Well, hello and welcome back to the CMS Esports League. Once again, welcome to week four. I am Captain Ahsoka, joined on the desk by none other than Ravishing Ravish. Ravish, how are we doing? It's week four. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking me. Things are fine as I guess something else falls apart around you, Captain. I don't know what you spilled, but I hope it wasn't too much of a mess. It was empty. By the way. Oh, hey, nice. Good job, man. Uh, but yeah, I, like you said, things are going to be fun as always. We do have some Valorant Smash action coming at your faces as per usual. Before we get into that, we should talk about our schedule for today. Oh, absolutely. Let's go ahead and get into it for a schedule one, of course, for today. And wow, look how pretty I am. So beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> this is your schedule. That's your schedule for today. You just get to look at me. But in all seriousness, no, let's take a look here. We got a virtual high school going up against East Mac number one. And then following up, also we're going to have Mallet Creek going up against West Charlotte. Then our number one seed at Audrey Kell going up against Myers Park. Followed up by Philip O'Berry and Providence. And then it will be the Palisades taking on Olympic. And finally, to wrap things up, we have South Mac versus JT Williams. But that's not all. Of course, we have that second page to go through, as per usual. So, our last call match of the night will be Geringer versus Butler, Hopewell, and Seas, and Hugh versus North Mech. Once again, covering all four sides of the Mech consistently within our broadcast schedules. And uh, we were talking about the first seed, so let's take a quick look, see at who the actual first seeds are across the board for all the teams as well. Mm-hmm. We'll take a look there. Oh, actually, look at this. Olympic has overtaken Audrey Kell in that number one spot, but still 3-0 around the board. Win streaks there for Olympic, Audrey Kell, and Butler. Keep in mind, Butler still very much up there on the board. Garinger coming in at fourth, followed by Palisades. Hopewell, uh, Seek, Myers Park, and that's going to round up our top eight, but then you have Providence and East Mech rounding up the top ten. Mm -hmm. yeah, as uh, as we cascade down to the rest of the schools, right? Uh, it does end up being just your one twos, and then your and, and then your you know o threes and so on and so forth, which is which is of course about to happen. But we do of course have some of the schools who have yet to be able to get into the action with with, with Harding Independence and Rocky River, the high schools. But yeah, so far, you know, Philip Berry, JT, South Beck, and North Beck have had a tough go of it. So we'll see. This week, they can go ahead and bounce on back. But moving on to Smash, though, perhaps the results there are a little bit different. Mm, well, let's take a look, see, and look at this. It is the number one seeded Audrey Kell for Super Smash, followed by Myers Park. And if, again, if we saw in the schedule correctly, they're going to be facing each other later on. So that's going to be in an interesting matchup indeed. But that is going to follow up, of course, by a Butler Olympic, Mallard Creek, East Mac, Hugh, Palisades, making up your top eight, and then Seek and JT Williams to finish up your top ten. Mm-hmm, right. Olympic, Audrey, and Butler have continued to maintain the top three or, 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 or the undefeated position throughout the entire day. So that on its own is impressive as as uh, is going to this week. We'll see if they can continue to maintain the top spot. But as the rest go ahead and cascade down, right? Uh, of course, Harding, uh, we did see them up on Rocky River not necessarily participating in, uh, you know, the, the, the Valorant side, but... On the Smash side, too, they've had a tough go over. Hardy, of course, coming into things today. But as the rest do come on in, right? Virtual, North Mech, and so on, O2s and O3s. It is a brand new week, homie. So we'll see the schools, uh, what it takes to shake things up. We should talk about our first matchup for today for Valorant that is going to be in front of us very, very soon. Yeah, and I cannot wait to get this one underway as well. Uh, again, just the fact that we're heading into week four here. Things are really starting to shape up for a lot of these teams. But to start us off here in week four, we're going to have East Mech versus Virtual High School Ravish. Why don't you give us the rundown of what players are making up these rosters? Well, it's really simple. It's Cat Battle, Ice Spicy, Nisekoi, and Astellas versus 
Cager, Jewel, Rogue, Sausage Boster, and Gladiator. Once again, it just seems as though the East Mac continues to have superior names. Yeah, and again, you're looking at a uh, virtual high school right now, currently at one and two. Meanwhile, East Mac two and one. So again, pretty even matchup, all things considered. And they do both have a lot to gain here and a lot to lose. Keep in mind, virtual high school are going to try and even things out at two and two. Meanwhile, East Mac do want to keep their positive uh, record currently alive and well as we get ready to head into our first matchup between these two teams. And also, I'm excited to see what the map picks and bands are going to look like, as well as the composition. I don't mm. think there have been too many changes being made, but with that being said, you really never can tell with these collegiate teams. Also true, but I do want to take a quick look at a second match of the day as well, too. Never mind. We're going to go right into the game, my friend. Uh, <laughs> as uh, uh, as, we, as we do have, like we're saying, East Baker Virtual High School, too, looking absolutely gorgeous on Haven. And it usually has been a distribution of either Haven, Ascent, or Icebox, usually for our map choices within our best of ones. It is just what a lot of these teams will, a lot of these teams are more comfortable with. As you look at the smash stuff going on across the side, it's that pay versus that King DDD. Yeah, I was about to say, I was confused for a moment. I thought Never that mind. was Hero, Hero, just from Never mind. Know, the, no, no, the brief no. glimpse. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. That's Hero. Okay. Yep. Just I, wanted to make sure I, because, because of the hair. <laughs> I saw the abilities pop up and I was like, wait, that looks like Hero's moveset. Wasn't entirely sure, but you know what I am sure of? It's currently a closed game between the two. And hopefully for Hero, the RNG definitely finds their favor. We'll see, though. As again, that one has continued to battle on. But. Again, really looking forward to seeing how these compositions will play out here on Haven. And you can already see East Mech bringing a Viper controller to the mix. That is a little interesting, considering that more often than not, when we're on uh, when we're on Haven, we do kind of see more of the Brimstone pick coming from the opposition. As you can see, they decided to go with the usual, bring that Brimstone. So again, going to be very curious to see how Viper pans out right here for East Mech. I think Viper on Haven is really underrated. You know, whilst the product, especially on the attacking side, just ensure you have the cover and you know, getting enough space so that you can, you know, cover your entries and so on and so forth. But Viper in general has been just such a damn good pick. But uh, aside from that, uh, we'll look on to virtual high school, see what they can do as well. But they got the brain and the brimmy, so we're gonna rush down stretch in the sky as well to flash the mid of the sights. As of right now, I'm gonna. Just cool it back a little bit and see what we got going on. And you know what, Ravish? This is great. This is a great day. We got our purple back. Purple V Turquoise. <laughs> and I'm all here for it. That just looks so clean, so fresh. But let's get round number one underway. As you can see, the spike is going to be settling up here over towards this A side, down over towards the sewer. Not much going down there. Out goes the doggo. But you can already see every single player coming from the side of East Mac have already gotten out of dodge. So they're watching and covering it. That main entrance side as uh, the flank does get shut down, so that's one taken away. And with that, they know at the walls will be present. That means that B is most definitely an option, but instead, the full rotate down to see where the killjoy is watching. But they're by C link, so can easily exit away. Should be able to hear all the footsteps coming in now. Yeah, you know what? I uh, trust me when I say that Viper is like my number one favorite agent. But with that being said, I was wondering what they were doing so far out of rotation, especially on the defensive side of the spike. For them to get caught out early, East Mech now are gonna have to try and retake this C site with only four players left standing. Meanwhile, the spike hasn't even gone down yet. Yeah, waiting guys right now. See if anybody did come in. I think that was a give up their life. No, they both died. They just let them all fall in. They died to the Util. Don't actually stop the plan. A nice flash by East Mech. Although they lost the one, but it's now a 3v2. They don't have the spike. They're, both of them are off the site. Now you see, Ravish, this is where we need the wingman. Wingman runs in, and they will finish that spike. They'll get the job done. Meanwhile, you can see Jewel trying to get the job done, but they will be gunned down, and now only one player remains for Virtual High left. School. East Mech have the player advantage here on the defensive side. And look at this, only 18 health. Gonna be an easy finish here for East Mech, as they will take round number one. That was... Overall, a tougher start for East Mech as the Viper, you know, tried to push aggressively before the rest of the team had actually significantly pushed in through A. So getting caught out of the flank is tough, but rest of them, like, Retro High School did, of course, to give away a couple picks for free, but it's just a pistol as uh, the KDDD takes the dub over here. 
Yep, that they do. And I gotta tell you, they have one of the meanest headbutts in the game. King D to D again. Utilizing that smash in order to take the last stock off of Hero. But you know who else has a mean headbutt? Yoshi. Yoshi, King D to D, the two dangerous head most dangerous headbutts in Smash. Meanwhile, we're getting right back into it here on Valorant. Going into round number two now here on Haven. So that's previous. The trailblazers are not used as of yet, but Paul is gonna look to move up instead. Try to see if he can find any information on their position. Yep. Does get caught out, no damage taken, and has to retreat back to the site. Is he gonna try to move in? Nice little jump. He catches all the information on them. Yeah, and again, it's gonna be that slow push trying to make its way over towards A. Did not work out for them in round number one, but let's see if they have any better luck here in round two. As right now, it seems like their luck is turning around. Catch his timing onto one. Sky's already made it in two. They have all the information seeking objects as they need. Nice flash, but not gonna actually catch Cal. Toe stuck in the corner. We're two for one. Spike has not gone down as of yet, but Bopo is covering the entrance. That's it for the bonus. Yeah, I mean, no big surprise there. Again, it's the Spectres. The Spectres coming in, getting the dub right there for East Mech. But now it's going to be round number three, the bonus round going down. And it will be the first full buy coming from Virtual High School. As they are going to be uh, going to be able to come through with the Vandals all around, as well as the full shields. All except Gladiator, unfortunately. Gladiator going to have to settle for the half shield. Yeah, it's... Pretty standard. Unfortunately, getting caught out of stuff and it is, is a tough situation like that. I see that is our second matchup going on right now as well in terms of Valorant. As you see, you know, 1 0 up already on the attacking side, but look to focus on A smack on the defense. If it's a five stack over by B, have guns in their hands finally. General Ortega, hey, what, what, what's she doing here? Uh, <laughs> to defend uh, upon Heather by window. Yeah, well, you can see the utility already beginning to trade out here over towards B main. The doggos, the. The uh, the stuns. We even got to see a nano nade go off for a little bit here. The boom bot went out, and now you gotta imagine that some decisions are gonna have to be made. East Mac already down a player. Are they just gonna give up sight at this point, or if they're gonna keep trying to continue to get these trades? As you can see, yet another nade does go out, but not connecting. They're just getting all this util out so early on. The bridge pushes past smoke. Oh no, and they lose so much so early. Only having three people in the defense. On Haven is so tough as well with virtual high schools having the better weaponry. And that'll remain that you know it's completely open. Ball has moved on up, but what can they do by themselves? As the flash comes in, looks to swing out, gets it. And now this is gonna be a tough free take. Yeah, especially with Empress being activated as well here from Eagle Rogue. Currently going to be watching that walkway there. Not going to be able to get the read, but nearly. As you can see, they do have at least one player up in heaven. There goes the peak, and it will just be by the small glimpse of the shoulder that Eagle Rogue is able to pick up that a limb, but also finds another, and will get the third for total for Eagle Rogue. Easy start off, clean finish. A lot of people. That the two try to go up against, and we're trying to push in like that split apart, put yourselves in open sight lines, and that will be the natural progression of the results. Nonetheless, we'll look towards now as it is a bonus on both sides because virtual high school nobody actually died, so it is a full gun round from both sides. So East Mac has their work cut out for them. Yep, that they do. Meanwhile, we're checking in on some of our smash action, and uh, you can see Knight. we ha yes, a Meta Knight from the old Meta. Currently, not the glory that they once had as their former self. After, of course, a lot of nerves to Meta Knight, but still a viable pick nonetheless. They're gonna have to try and hold their own against a me brawler. Dude, I only never played Meta Knight back in like, Smash Ultimate. Sorry, no, uh, 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 back in Smash Brawl, I should say, but. Ooh, nice little pickoff goes in the cubby. He stays tucked. Cap finds the sightlines. And taking out one is uh, taking out, especially the raid, as a good start. Oh, a fantastic start indeed. And now you can see it's going to be a slow rotation coming from Virtual High School. They still have plenty of time, of course, to try and find an avenue to get this spike onto site. And already you can see Gladiator trying to at least get some cheeky head peeks there in Garage, but not much doing. Saw one peek out. 
Center around B. They can use the flash if you look to enter in. And yep. Use that to clear out the corner. Find the info. Oh. Outside was water part of util first, but instead gets caught. Flash doesn't connect. He knows there's somebody pushing. Slow finds a swing. As wall goes up, barely. As the rest not all move in on the B side past. Just a small gap. General take a take two. Equal imposter find. And one. Spike is down to taking it. Only one is left alive. Has the ultimate. Looking to delay it top of the molly, but through garage takes it. Oh, that was so close. And a great last stand coming from E-Girl Imposter there. But again, that was such a huge flank coming from Fade in order to get the read in. Of course, come in clutch for E-Smack as now they will take round number four and find themselves with a comfortable two-round cushion lead. But the thing is, this was East Max buy, and that means that the entire buy will just be, you know, completely dwindled down to just scraps of, 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 on everybody who died. But meanwhile, Retro High School, a save last round. They got more than enough eco to be able to continue this momentum forward. Yeah, that they do. And and don't forget, East Mac is still very talented. They can do a whole lot with a little. So you cannot count them out, especially when they have two Vandals on their side. It's going to be up to them to try and make the most out of it. Meanwhile, we do see the push once again. It looks like it's shaping up over towards the A site from Virtual High School, although they are taking their time with it, as they should. Don't want to push or force the issue. And right now, East Mac just playing a perfectly patient game. With the Viper's Pit up on C, they are funneled into trying to go towards A. Pole is around. Here's a sound kit the Trail Blazer that's going up to through through sewers. Getting sight. This Bladestorm does not connect realistically with just a couple of shots thrown out. And now Rush High School. They're all been found. All the info is on them. They have to rotate to B. Yep, that they do, and they got to do it very, very quickly. But look at this. You have the KJ from East Mac locking things down here in Garage. They do get rid of at least the bot, but the Nano Swarm goes out. And now Gladiator able to finally take out the KJ in Garage. Fantastic head click there, but look who is there in waiting. It is the Viper, still with the Viper's Pit up on C Main. And I doubt they want to go through that with all the cover being there. So the, the, crucially... Need to make sure they're going around and through towards the back of the scene to get shallow control. Is that 20 seconds left to allow that to happen? But the rest of these mech are all walking in. Nice peek out. Polo to get one, but immediately gets traded off. Spike I'll make it a 2v3. East mech still inside the Viper's Pit. Cat's still waiting around. If you clear them out, that should just be it as you get the plant down. Yeah, that was a fantastic swing out of Garage coming from Virtual High School. Being able to use the Leer and take down two players in the trade. Meanwhile, you have E-Girl Rogue there on site being able to hold things down for now. They did take a little bit of damage there, but not much. And now they find the head quick, making it that much more difficult here for East Mac as only the Viper remains. And they played that beautifully. Honestly, Virtual High School. To the T, where they got found out early, rotated out uh, pretty slowly as well. To end this, the fact that they got that pick by Garage is crucial. So they really gain that space and make and make the very fast judgment that you know what, it's easier to go B. We can hold this down. We have person advantage, and all they got to do was stay alive from there as well. And especially with Eagle Roll being alive, you can never truly really count them out. So a one round differential with East Mac only having a a bit of broken by yep well here we go getting ready to head into round number six in the purchasing power looks about even here as you can see virtual high school once again hovering over towards a trying to find that early pick which they need to do that's how they found success in the previous round they're trying to replicate it here and now gladiator gonna be moving out towards sewers doesn't get this read on one and can't get the read on the other they will fall first Ooh. and now polo having a fantastic round here Pushing out as well. Places of smoke just to deceive. Big first picks. Now the flank comes through as well. Now corner of them all in A main. A 4K. Back to maintain their. Yeah, and Fawny made me frowny a little bit. Not because they're playing poorly, but because in that last trade, why were they aiming at the toes? You got to pick that aim up. You know, you got to get it at least to the chest. You're not going to do much by, you know, aiming for the aiming for the foots. But here's the thing. Sometimes a head click is hard. 
You got it. Uh, it is. Mindful of everything. It's it's a hard easy as much as yay makes it look easy, it's not. Mm. But on our grass and virtual high school right now, so a decent buy between all of them. It's because they got to save up, and the killjoy is set up on C this time. But most of the utils by the entrance to slow them down. Yeah, and this is the first time that they're actually going to be going for a full send here on to C main. But you can see, again, the KJ just has it completely locked down. A nice Viper wall in order to really block the aggression. And barely Gladiator was able to get out of dodge. And now they're just going to have to try and find another avenue to rotate. I rotate, they tried, but getting caught by A may not be what they wanted to have happen. So to leave them now trying to move in. Flash out 50 seconds, a lot of time still left. But the Zydus cleared out. Mac look a bit completely retake. They have the lockdown here too, but there's also a lockdown on. Never mind, it's gone. <laughs> there's still the orbital strike on virtual high school side. Yep, nice ice wall here. Should be uh, taken care of very quickly. But regardless, just anything to really slow the aggression coming from East Mac on this retake. They still have all five of their players up and ready to fight. Meanwhile, out comes the Orbital Strike. Not being able to get anyone in that attempt as now finally the retake is underway from East Mac. Go up by heaven. The rest of East Mac all walk in as three. And Eagle Pulse tries to find the spray transfer, but not all of them fall into his lap. Well, putting East Mech at five to two. Meanwhile, on the other side, similar score as well. And you know what I'm loving this? This is how you want to start off week four, just because, you know, I do recall in week three, we had a lot of game ones happen on, on Lotus. Do you remember that? We had a lot of Lotus play, and I think people kind of got... Yeah, they they got their their fill. They had enough of Lotus. Meanwhile, we're heading back to Haven, and now we're starting to see kind of what we're used to seeing. Now we're getting back to the status quo. Mm-hmm. I believe it was in High School Musical. They said, no, no, no. Stick to the status quo. Look at Mal Creek and West Charlotte. Similar situations, but... Dog goes out towards the corner. Zekrom staying alive. Not able to foul. Nobody actually checks Hector. But Zekrom with a swing. We had a 2v1. Staying around. Round one. To get Malik Creek that third. Yeah, but a nice little RGB show there at the end, too, with the with the Switchblade. Very nice, very cool, and we always have to remember in Valorant, it's the skins that get the wins. Keep that in mind as we get ready to head into this next round here, and things are looking a little good right now uh, for West Charlotte, but keep in mind, Mallet Creek also having their good round win is doing them well in terms mm -hmm. of economy. They got themselves a pretty decent buy on only one Guardian. No, they're going to buy up. They're buying the Vandal. Yeah, they have to too. But uh, let's see if that continues forward. As we can start to pick, take a quick pick at the other game after this round as well. They had two specters. Mel Creek, you know, playing the classic default position. But West Charlotte deciding to play split a part of three two with a spike in the hands going towards A instead. They'll bait the wall out early, but a Hector instead on the other side will clear out garage. And he goes towards B. Yeah, very interesting right now uh, for Mallet Creek. Again, they're playing, they're opting to go for that really aggressive defense, and they're getting picked out for it. So they're really going to have to slow things down, and again, play for more of a retake type of play style uh, here on Haven, which is the meta currently. Meanwhile, you do see West Charlotte going absolutely gunny. Ooh. Hector manages to find the ace in round nine. Hector came in on an absolute mission to clear out everybody in front of him. And that'll force Mallet Creek on a save as a... Let's, let's take a quick look at yeah, the game as well. See how they're doing. You know, those were our originals that, those were our originals that we started off with too. They had the purple on their side. As you look for the rest, it seems as though... Uh, the one round after the next lockdown, not going to help out. Yeah, no, unfortunate as it may be, you know, we really haven't seen the lockdown work out uh, a few times. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a fantastic deterrent, but unless you time it perfectly, there's really not much doing, as it is easily avoidable. But you know what's not easily avoidable? Hector. True. Hector continues to press the issue, as you say. 
and it'll leave them just in awe of him trying to wait and see as to what they can do, what they can try to respond with. The answer right now is null and void. Dortier. Watch and see. See is one. Oh, the dashing was a move. The dash was fun. It was fun to watch. I don't know how yeah. it wasn't very effective uh, in the in the end of things, but it was still very entertaining nonetheless and a fantastic round once again coming from the side of West Charlotte. But take a look at this. It's the matchup that we are all too familiar with. Young Link versus Ganondorf. Uh, a matchup for the ages that we've experienced. Young Link usually does come out on top, but I think Ganon is going to try to rewrite the script. You know, and one of the best things, for those that don't know, I actually recently came back from a Smash LAN uh, over there in Valdosta, Georgia, and one thing that they did that was really entertaining is that they had an entire Ganon bracket to see who the best Ganon in the South region was, and come to find out, it was Peanut. Hey, all right. Seems as though Ganon is just way too popular. You got to make sure you find the best one out of all of them. I'm, I'm just saying, they're lucky I wasn't there, or else I would have at least placed... Top 32, just saying. Oh, big bets. I mean, and there yeah. was like 150 participants. So, like, you know, top 32, I could see it. Like, no cap. Ravishing Ravish, you definitely would have made top 32 and had a run for top 38. Top notch Ganon, for sure. Let's go, baby. That's who you're talking about. Uh, but <laughs> no, man, he's getting bullied. Ah, uh, but hey, Gan takes a bunch of damage. Is that on the, on the re return? Almost has the three stock, though, is the thing. But he's 115, and Young Link is just a small boy, and is just getting bullied around. The dunk is crazy. Yeah, that down air is nasty. Nothing worse than getting stomped into oblivion. <laughs> Ganon taking a very confident round off a of Young Link there. But let's see if West Charlotte can come up with yet another confident round win here on Haven. Right out to B, they go. Good use wingman to get the plant down securely. And that he does. They've managed to cover the orb here too, but... Mallow Creek are all looking to walk in. They have the thrash on the other side. Sees the info. And they're all just now just stuck. Past the wall they go. The Reina pushes one side as Hector watches the other. All their duel is doing the work. Oh my goodness. If if Hector honestly just keeps this pace, they might just I, I don't even know. They might just solo the whole thing. Currently sitting on 24 eliminations. Meanwhile, they are getting a lot of help there. I mean, look at the assists raining in from the rest of Mallard Creek. Oh, I'm sorry, West Charlotte performing extraordinarily well. A lot of assists currently on the board, but Hector again there to get the last shot on and get the eliminations. Hector absolutely playing out of their mind right now on Haven as we get ready to head into round number 13. Mm-hmm. The swap, the half switch, and we'll see if 9-3 has any significance. The side of Mallet Creek. Just a couple of ghost spies, mainly classics, interestingly enough. Unexpected, I would say, on my part, but Saw Shorty's there, too, as they're holding 24 positions. Two holding by long for the side of Mallet Creek. And Reyna pushing up so far. Bonsai could see all of them. See the info, takes one, and dismisses out. Oh, that was very cheeky. And you know what? I, we even saw earlier, like, there was a deep flank, and we were questioning it. But when you do it well with Arena, and you can get out of dodge quickly, it just makes it worth the while. Meanwhile, you do see Beans trying to force the issue, as they do throw out the goo there, Moss, trying to find at least one elimination, and they do get oh. one in the trade. Power is just chilling there as well. Instead, they all get sent to Mallet Creek. Them being passive ends up being their downfall. As West Charlotte decides, you know what? You you you're not gonna come, come, look come on the defense nonetheless. And, and then once again, Lordy Lordy Arisu with the shorty misses the first shot, but was able to land the second. Absolutely fantastic. But meanwhile, we're checking back in with some of our smash action, and we have Joker versus Sephiroth. All right, two massive characters from the franchises. That have defined what it means to play in both Persona and also Kingdom Hearts, I'm going to guess. Because I don't think he's from Final Fantasy. Sephiroth is 100% from Final Fantasy. That is Cloud's arch nemesis. That's like Cloud's brother. 
But wait, but then isn't he also in King of the Hearts as well? Yeah, it's like a hidden boss. But no, 100%. Sephiroth, Final Fantasy, Arch Nemesis of Cloud. Okay. I've never played a single King of Hearts or Final Fantasy game. Respect. I have no idea. Understandable. There's a lot of games I haven't played, like Joker's game. Never played it. Persona 5. Yeah, yeah I mean, I know it's Persona just because they have they have Arsen, and I know that's like a Persona character, and, that, and that's the mm -hmm. only that's the only reason. That's the only reason I know, but I've never that's played... That's Persona. Exactly. I've never actually played any of the Persona games. That's okay. Uh, I've only really played most of Persona 5. It's a very long game, but it is cool. It's very rpg as The story is super, uh, super just like... Um, uh, immersive. That's what I want to say. And there's a lot you can do with 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 having mini games like storylines and just uh, like, even a dating sim uh, uh, as a part of it. Really cool. Yeah. Without going on. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, again, this is just such a great matchup because Joker has been long established as one of the best characters in Smash, and of course, Sephiroth, uh, definitely considered up there in terms of sorties. I, I would put Cloud a little bit higher tier than Sephiroth, but let's see what Spongebob Bob can make of it. Currently, they're doing extraordinarily well in terms of percentage differential. They have an impressive lead over Chairman, mm -hmm. but let's see how long that lasts. Well, let's see if Chairman can, to, to tell his opponents to sit, or will he be the one who gets sat down? Climbing on up in terms of the actual percentage differential. Can he find one more up? Yes, he does. The big up tilt to finish it off. And it's interesting that that's really all it took. Didn't even have to dedicate full to the up smash. Just a nice up tilt will get the job done. Meanwhile, we're heading back into some more Valorant here between Mallet Creek and West Charlotte. As West Charlotte now has secured themselves a nice eight-round lead over Mallet Creek. I mean, Sephiroth is so light, that's the issue. He's just too skinny. He needs some meat on his bones. But... Oh, what? Joker is built the exact same. They both have the Pete Davidson frame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at that right now, Mallet Creek. Right, man, the firmly planted on the site as the spike does go down. There are four members of West Charlotte around. Uh, trying to push it through the garage. One gets taken. West Charlotte should at this point know that they don't have necessarily the guns to contend. Mallet Creek as of right now, the walls are doing more than enough. But one peeks up, makes it a 2v2 by the end. Hector. Needs a gun to try to stop all this, but as one waiting around the wall and Bosnia gets taken down, his power finds it next. And you know what? Not too soon either. Mallet Creek needed to answer back, and finally they have for what feels like the first time in a long time. But is it going to be enough to actually get a decent buy here? I mean, keep in mind that they do have a little economy, but there's literally two ops on the side of West Charlotte right now. What, what are they thinking? They don't even have all the purchasing power. There's literally a marshal on the other side and an Ares, but yet they're, they're comfortable coming through with two ops. Finally, we could see Bosnia Gaming does switch out for the Odin, but still. That's still like just as expensive almost, man. It's, that's crazy, but they leave them now and me in the position thinking, okay, you wanna look to just spam through by C. They're moving as a four person unit from C to B to now meandering around A. Finding no info there to his Mallow Creek. Similar positions as previous. Waiting for the push to come to them. But West Charlotte is not going to allow them for the opportunity. They'll instead stay on the site and pass the wall. Now they know they are in here. Yeah, and again, slowing the progress here. West Charlotte going to be giving Sight completely away here. They're not even really going to be sticking it except for the lone Battle Sage, who does manage to take out Emexity. Fantastic trade right there for West Charlotte, as now they will have a huge player advantage. Now 4v2. Let's make it 3v2. And now Mallet Creek down to power. And at the end of it all, Mallet Creek is now powerless, as that last player does go down. And West Charlotte take yet another round, putting them on match point. Mallow Creek, now as it stands, do have enough to buy up and for the full buys to happen, except for uh, except for anxiety. They are one away from both the Rolling Thunder and the Res Up as well. So those two can definitely change the entire shifting and the pace of the round if they're allowed to get it off. Meanwhile, Empress did right now for West Charlotte has not popped it yet. And they're playing a, 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 a one-two-two type defense that is immediate shot. 
Yeah, and I don't know if you were looking at the buys coming from West Charlotte, but they're going full Remember No Russian. Four Odins in their arsenal and that one operator that already got the first pick. So they are going above and beyond here, and they are just spraying down the side of Mallet Creek. But the trades do come out, and it will be a 3v2. Emexity now hides within the smoke, but does get gunned down Aww. by the Odin spray. As one, it's a 2v1 in the corner. Peaks out, running gun. It's not going to be enough. But well, Charlotte will take the first dub of the day. Yep, that they do. But let's check into East Mac and Virtual High School. They're not quite done yet. An 8-4 split. Currently, 2v1 in the favor of Virtual. The Molly goes out. And the last player from East Mac goes down. Virtual High School making a comeback. Mm-hmm. Slowly but surely, one by one, they managed to... Uh, at least push them out, which is impressive. On the other hand, that is a Mewtwo versus a Banjo Kazooie. Two characters you don't see super often. And I find Banjo is the weirdest one out of the bunch. Mewtwo, like, I get, but he's also so slow as well. Mewtwo to me is a glass cannon. Again, they're able to put out massive damage, but get not their knockback is is insanely insanely vulnerable. They get pushed out so easily. And believe it or not, Banjo actually getting higher pick percentages now. Like literally, mm. after my time at the land, I have seen Banjo picks used in top 32, nearly making it into the into the top eight. And you know what? They're starting to win me over very slightly. I'm skeptical still of Banjo and Kazooie. Oh, unfortunate peak. Not able to find it. Taking the judge away from the side of virtual high. Hmm. But instead, that'll force the thing on press rotation to come in. B, I know, has not been the favorite site to go to. They can just look to go move around, go to C instead. It's wide open. And in front of the wall, they don't find anybody there. Yeah, time continuing to take away. We're now under a minute. Here in round number, um, again, caster math, apologies. Round number 14. There we go. And you can see it is going to be a slow push back towards sewers. And again, not really going much of anywhere. I, I, I'm assuming that they're trying to do a, a fake of some kind. But I don't think virtual high school is buying it. Placing sentry. The double back is interesting, but... Seconds left. They have the entire kill just set up there, so it'll be found very quickly if they do decide to enter in. And they haven't really forced any rotates here either. So I think Virtual High School is wise to what they want to do. Past the wall they go. The dash here with the smoke. And on top of the, the actual molly, a bunch of damage. Pole still gets one and wants to push through. That dog could have actually killed them if it landed. Yep. Well, it didn't. And now it's going to have to be a 3v4 retake for Virtual as they try and find an avenue or an opening. Only six health remaining on Polo as they do get blinded out. And they got gunned down. The blind confused them into shooting their own teammate. Luckily, no friendly fire in Valorant. But it is going to be an another round win, putting Virtual that much closer to equalizing against East Mech. Mm-hmm, right, naturally so, because they managed to get the first pistol, so that'll just uh, move them over to the full buy here as well, but East Mech, this is where they can make their chances, try to make the comeback that they all wanted to have. But full buys should be there for them across the board, and we'll see if they make the same sort of double back plays that they had previously. They just need to find a sort of comfortable footing, as they are 2-1 right now in the standings. I have this match getting ever so closer. Meanwhile, we're checking in on Mewtwo and Banjo and Kazooie. Banjo still with a one-stock lead. And Mewtwo trying to put things back even in terms of stock. But they're taking a good bit of damage in the process. And now, as you can see, round number 15 well and underway here on Haven. It looks as though concentration being made towards mid. But the rotation will go to C-Main. It will be found on C. There is this guy across the corner. But the smoke up with that's just, it actually just allows virtual high school on their own to you know move around the neutral plant site and instead they'll move away from it and decide instead that maybe garage the play to move towards the back of the sea eagle rogue found in the corner and they're gone 
Yep, G W O D E Y E. That was a good eye coming from Polo, and also a great, um, a great point out coming from the fade there the, uh, to to really point them out. The Prowler was able to find the Reina hiding there in the corner, and then Polo just taking quick yeah. advantage. And now it will be Eastmac with that one player advantage. They do see the Sage there in the corner, and it will be Polo to get the wall bang to now make it a four v three. Is now looking oh. Gladiator out from Garage. That's crazy that he got two there too, just catching two puts completely off guard. No gun on here either. And Stano, they'll take this moment to move up and take three for themselves. No ultimates, no lockdowns. E smack. One playing off site, two playing off. And you know what, this is actually a better chance than any right now for the retake just because they have lost so much utility in the process of taking this A site. But you know, that's not going to help them at all. Virtual now in a very tough situation and they cannot hold on. It will be a settles to come in clutch and pick up a three piece there in round number 15. As we mentioned before, this was going to be the round. The East Mac was supposed to pull it back. And... By, by some good early picks instead, they match snowball all the way through. Even though they lost you know, a couple of people to just timing and Valorant. But our virtual has a chance here once again. And you know And this usually has been where they can find their way back in. Yeah, I just wanted to point out real quick this Peach versus Byleth going on right now. Peach has won me over lately in a, in a lot of competitive Smash events. Peach has been putting up the numbers right now they get put up with the first stock but still i'm starting to become somewhat of a peach fan that's fair i think peach is cool i've uh and i would say good peaches that i've seen are some stuff they, they can that they can do is ridiculous yeah that turn up is mean as a matter of fact we were saying over the weekend that peach was in fact uh turning up <laughs> Meanwhile, we're heading right back into the action here on Haven. Yep, Polo take two right away. Gets swung up by Gladiator AI, who has been a standout player for virtual high school. Finding pick after pick so consistently on the initiated roll of this sky. A lockdown, but not a lockdown, but Spike goes down. And once again, similar positions as previous. They can just play lineups so right now between the Viper and, of course, uh, the Killjoy as well. Yep, down goes the poor little bot. No alarm bot for you. As meanwhile, you can see Jenna Ortega is going to be lining up towards sewers, but gets gunned down in the process. And now only Cat remains. Pros don't fake. They go for the Ooh. stick, but they get dealt with. It was a good play, thinking that perhaps he would have at least got into half. Then we tried to check, but the slow crawl up the gives the illusion that they had enough time to continue to maybe get the defuse down. Either way, East Mech now. Air 4, they're funneling Virtual High School in a position that's almost undercoverable. They'll have one more gun round after this, and then things do look desolate. But ultimates are about to come up for both of these sides in droves. We'll see what East Mech does. I see, once again, with a similar poke and prowl, Sky is around the corner. The smoke goes up, there's a rolling thunder clear up the entire site, so nobody there, but there we go, Sky Fly gets found. Honestly, that was great team coverage coming from East Mac in order to keep Polo alive because they were so vulnerable just now. But now you can see they are pushing in towards Garage. The Battle Sage has to back off. Fawny not going to take the chance, and they're going to send the Rangina in instead. And uh, you can see the trade's now going underway. Boppo able to find an elimination there, looking to get two. Mm -hmm. Not much doing around the corner, and there they go. Boppo finds another. Give it them once. You can't, that, that cannot be happening. If you're if you're on a decent if you're on the defensive side and looking to retake with a position like virtual high schools when you're down so much, you've got to find a way to double tip a lot, go in past your flash the smokes, and if anything, just be ready and trade angles. Is East Mecca doing exactly that? Nice. They have the sidelines covered. Yeah, rather than you radish, I'm sorry. I, I wanted to pick your brain for a moment while we got smash up, and you know yeah. we had a debate: Is Peach holding a turnip or a, or in fact a radish? I think it's a radish because radishes are white. You see, so... that's what I said, and they were, they corrected me, and they was like, "No, it's a turnip." I, I was like, "Hang on, I got it from a pretty good source who himself is in fact a radish." Told me. <laughs> 
that it was a radish. Mm-hmm. Because turnips are purple. Now, both are root vegetables that come from the ground, but the color differentiation the color differentiation and flavor profile is different. When it comes to radishes, you have to trust ravishing ravish the radish. <laughs> I've uh I've debated getting a cosplay of the vegetable. Oh no, shot in the back. Uh not sure what the intention was there, but that does give East Mech all the space they do desire for the lot ultimates still available. Well, here comes the saddles now, forcing their way onto the sea site. Nearly got caught out, but they're gonna send out the the util instead uh, creating a little space here and now out goes the viper's pit gonna be able to give cat more than enough time to plant here and now it's gonna be all about the retake coming from virtual high Bring them down. virtual high and i was waiting around to see where they enter in from the locks i will be there to clear them all out uh, Bopo gets found as well as looking to ex exit the site so they know there's at least one to two when down by seed long they have the nightfall available for the post to do so needed as the rest enter in, and naturally you oh, think the cat is definitely going to get detained, but does not get seen crucially, but they'll just defuse right in front of them. And that was a clutch retake and one that they definitely needed. Again, being able to use the Viper's Pit to their advantage. And, you know, that is just a clean turnaround there to use the cover, and especially um, applying that KJ ult as well, the lockdown, to make sure that no one was able to actually get in. And the one player who might have been able to do something about it got detained. So it's somewhat of a, of a feels bad right there. But at the same time, it was a great answer back coming from the retake. Mm-hmm. Uh, because you are assuming that... You know, if they don't get detained, then it's an easy swing out to stop the defuse and give enough time for the teams to come in. But it's too much of an interference. Either way, as we look at the eternal debate between the Radish Haver and the guy from Final Fantasy. <laughs> Absolutely. Right now, the guy from Final Fantasy able to take the first stock off of the Radish Haver. But that's not going to put them out of the fight just yet. They're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and back towards center stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pikmin just has su such an array advantage over the Peach, for what I see. Like, they can just continue to poke away, especially with, with the Peach spot of the sword, but Peach has been doing a good job of closing the distance pretty consistently. Try to edge guard, cannot do so, allows it to get back on. They're just trading positions at this point. Yeah, right now the edge guard going underway here for the Sephiroth. The recovery is there, but can they land the get up? No, they're just going to eat massive damage there, uh, avoiding that down tilt. But the back air does land, and it is going to be another stock off of Peach. And right now the Sephiroth pick looking pretty good. Mm-hmm. Sephiroth continue to dominate, but he is 134, so one decent hit will take him out. And there's a decent hit that I was talking about. Again, I'm telling you, Peach... I've seen some things. Let me just tell you, I have seen some things. Peach is a is a true brawler, and I I don't mean like brawler in the sense of smash categories. I mean just a, just an absolute phenom, phenomenal smash character in general. They believe it or not can actually take a lot of damage. I've seen recently a Peach go 200 plus percentile and still come away with a stock. Absolutely amazing. My my opinion has been completely turned around on Peach. I believe it. Oh, but recovery cannot land. They get interrupted out of it twice. So uh, leave the Sephiroth on top. Sad now it is East Mac in a 2v4. Looking to go up against Virtual High. They have the round advantage and now have even things out in terms of the person advantage as well. But they just need a site to go on. 30 seconds left. And I mean, you're looking at the spike carrier right now, and literally just like a gust of wind can take them out, and they get taken out accor accordingly. There, there you have it. I mean, Polo now, the last player standing for East Mech and Virtual High, looking pretty good. As you can see, they do have three players standing and all the control. Meanwhile, the, the clock continuing to tick away. So at this point, for Polo, I feel as though they might as well just save. Yeah, and I think Polo's doing exactly that because they know they cannot get onto a site within with just impunity. So, instead, especially with them being taken down by C Long, Save does come in. Virtual High continue to stay alive for one round after the next. And for East Mech as well, this is where the buyers are getting a lot tougher. So, you're having to prioritize the specters, light shields here and there as well. Meanwhile, Virtual High, their bank is clean. 
Yeah, it's looking pretty good for them right now. Uh, although I will say, uh, you do see at least that one Spectre and somewhat of, and you know, you get the half shield from Gladiator there on the side of Virtual. Meanwhile, East Mac, uh, somewhat matching here, almost identical buys <laughs> coming from both of these teams. As now we do get round twenty underway. Yeah, is well goes up pretty early on. That should be cleared out to get the entrance into the garage. So all those angles will be gone, but. They use the lockdown and the nightfall as well to complete take control of the side of B. They don't have the info on the and, and on the rest of the players to fall. Oh, she she got a garage. Cat is found. What still gets the headshot? But not able to find the second. There's the trade. And this should be match point for a snap. Yeah, it very well should be, especially when you have Polo anchoring on site as they do get one elimination. And Jenna Ortega will find the final elimination there in round 20. And now we're going into round number 21, match point for East Mac. East Mac, all they want to do is close things out. And instead, it'll be the timeout taken by Virtual High School just to see and make sure that, you know, they don't necessarily uh, get completely dominated at this point. They want to make things a lot closer, so, but they, they got a bit of time, though. Yeah, and, you know, four rounds really isn't that uh, insurmountable when you look at Valorant as a whole. I've seen it plenty of times. We've all seen it, you know, and not to mention, you know, the dreaded 9-3 curse and its history. Deficits have been closed before, but the problem is now is that East Mac is on match point. It makes it that much more difficult, and in, it really applies a lot more pressure. So the question is, can Virtual High School handle the pressure? They should be able to. I couldn't. <laughs> I'll let you know right now. Yeah. My hands are shaking for them. I mean, it's. I think. I, I think they've. Uh, they they've got a good head on their shoulders. They have a decent buy. They have the Empress, and that has been the biggest wave. They have stopped all momentum against East Smack. They just got it and make sure that they're not dying early on. Yeah, staying on Gladiator Eye, so it may not be, you know, a complete run over, but. One away from Fawny's res. Time to work. And that can be a big difference maker. Yeah, meanwhile, once again, I was even mentioning how much damage Peach can take. You can see they're currently at 144, 150, and finally knocked out. I made the mistake of calling Peach a heavy just because they took 200% damage. They're not by any means. I'm pretty sure Peach would, would slap me for making such a comment. Meanwhile, we're heading back on Haven. Once again, match point here for East Mac. Mm-hmm. 5v5, slow pushes from East Smack, just taking out parts of the wall and checking close angles. They push in the garage. There is a double push coming in for Virtual High School to stop them, but instead it'll be to rotate over onto B. And the Reyna is also so far up on A. Has not been checked just yet, and they do so finally. Eagle Road has the Empress falling. Nice flash. That's a trade. Yeah, nice even trade to start things out here for V4. Clock continuing to tick away. Viper Wall does go out. And again, I think this is going to apply more of a distraction than anything. But KJ, again, having that ability to just lock down an entire site by their lonesome makes them just such an advantageous uh, agent to have on the defense. Meanwhile, Polo making their way through Garage. And Polo finds a no cover at all. Easy pick. And the Viper said, once again, even takes out Jewel to clear out B and watching. Everybody coming from A as well. He's glad the AI. Remember, they have a Stinger, so they can't really try to fight against this. But I think Paul's ready to clear things out. Paul is ready to close the game here, Cap. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they dropped the Viper's Pit. They want to end it here and now. They don't want to have to put in any extra work as the Viper's Pit now goes away. Not sure what the call was there, but... Oh well, East Max still having an advantage. We're watching, sees it. Oh, no wall bank found. Now the flash available from the sky. They could use the swing into the corner. And this guy the AI left. I think they'll just let the spike run out as East Smack. We'll go 3-1 in the standings. Yeah, and Boppo actually got that last elimination. I'm not sure if it was intended, but they they were spraying down the Seekers, of course, and then caught the Reyna in the crossfire. So, happy accidents, maybe? Or just really calculated? You know what? You've got me, my friend, but... 
Right now, it is a battle between the Kirby and Lavina Soar. Trying to find the recovery. Oh, just doing it again and again, but cannot find the position on stage. Never mind. Switching possessions. Venusaur is fine for now. And I got to tell you, Pokemon Trainer, one of my favorite Smash characters ever. But at the same time, Kirby Kid holds a place in all of our hearts from our childhood. One of the OG Nintendo characters. And right now, they are getting absolutely punished by this mm -hmm. Pokemon Trainer. Keep in mind, Pokemon Trainer currently still at three stocks at 150%. Mm-hmm. And now with the big old heavy Charizard, they find the big hit, but cannot actually get the elimination out of the Kirby, the throw, and there they go. Yep, didn't take much. And now a possibility of a three-stock dub, but still at 155%. Uh, I, I don't I don't see Charizard lasting that much longer, but with that being said, Kirby just being ever so squishy, all it really is going to take one or two solid hits, and that will be all she wrote. Meanwhile, you do see the Charizard, if it's the same that what I'm seeing, it looks a little frozen, but finally, <laughs> we unfreeze. Yeah, we're fine. We're going to see the elimination come out for the Kirby, but it is... A two against one type stock. Kirby's already taking a bit of damage, and Squirtle is known for being able to rack up the damage very, very quickly. And the Venusaur there can look to find the closeouts as well. Rebunk. Yeah, and you know, that's what I love about Pokemon Trainer the most is that you literally cover your, you know, your three main bases there. You got Squirtle, who's the speedster. You got Venusaur, who's the zoner. Charizard, who's the heavy. And it will be a two-stock dub for Bonk on the Pokemon Trainer over Kirby. Mm-hmm. As we now look towards the next couple set of matches, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick two-minute break. As we come back, we'll have more Valor and Smash. We'll see y'all back in a bit.
Hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome on back. What's up with y'all homies? Welcome, uh, welcome back to the CMS League. Ravish, Ravish, Captain Asoka. Let's get into some more games, shall we? Oh, absolutely. And we already had a couple of doozies. And yes, take a look at this. We're heading back to Lotus. Oh, that's wonderful. Especially after we just saw two Haven matchups. Don't get me wrong. Haven is great. But Lotus is that new new. We're having so much fun on it. And take a look at this right now. You're looking at Audrey Kell, uh, one of our top seeded teams currently. They're 3-0 and going up against Myers Park. And look at this. They are hovering on the Cypher pick. That is interesting. I don't mind that. Because uh, the Cypher is actually not too bad at Lotus, and I find the meta of Lotus is still building out, right? So you do have a bit of time to get it all together. I do like the um, I do like the actual gecko pick, so that's pretty cool. But aside from that, um, the rest is a bit standard. Uh, I think the Breach has been, you know, picked a lot more prominently. The Viper as well too has also maintained. Yeah, I feel like right now Breach is like the character for Lotus. Like, if you're going into Lotus, you gotta have a Breach coming with you. You know, I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. So if they don't bring Breach to the party, I think they're actually gonna be somewhat at a, at a disadvantage. But with that being said, I'm interested to see on how Cipher goes out now, especially after the Cipher game mode that we all got treated to, or you know, uh, the the whatever event. <laughs> I'm sorry, but regardless, Cipher now getting somewhat of a little bit more recognition from the from the Valorant community. Interesting to see how they will perform on Lotus because as I am familiar with with Cipher former being a Cipher main myself, I have yet to see a lot of gameplay of them on this map. So it's going to be usually it's going to be interesting to see how they play out as we get ready to get this round number 1 underway. But meanwhile, Let's take a look at some of this smash here, and it looks as though we do have an inkling, and I want to say that's a Byleth. It's hard to see on that tiny screen, but with that being said, we're going right back into round number one here on Lotus, and so far, so good, it seems. We do have the purple coming out from the attacker side. Hip, hip, hooray. You know, we love our purples, and again, looking at this matchup here on Smash, it looks as though that the inkling doing f exceptionally well now going up three to one stocks over what i assume is a byleth uh, from what i can see no I, I might be mistaken here uh yeah inkling still one stock away from getting the dub there in a in spectacular fashion as now you can see the pistol round here in valorant back onto lotus is well and underway and it's going to be a full b push coming from the side of Audrey Kell. This is interesting just because I guess it does make sense being that B is the easiest spike site to plant on. You would want to do it during the pistol round, if anything. And now they are decided to rotate back over towards a main and none other than Killjoy and Sova are going to be there from the side of Myers Park to hold things down. And nobody watching long here. To me, that is interesting, especially considering that you do have the Vipers wall up, but not really uh, covering too many lane uh, lane sites. And now you see TG Gum on the C site being a sneaky, sneaky snake. And still, neither one of the players on C were able to find each other, but Cypher does find one over here towards mid. And now, out comes Kamichi. Gonna be throwing out the wingman to get the wingman plant. You know how much we love that. Getting our first wingman plant of the day. Well done, the little homie. He is now Neil before me. Gonna be pushing the issue here onto B main. Does get blinded for their efforts, but is able to avoid the dizzy. And this looks like it's going to be a pistol round for Ardry Kell. Yikes, Sani trying to find the last elimination. But hang on, Gum goes for the ace and gets it with the melee. And there you have it. One of, uh, I do believe, our second ace of the day. And that one going yeah. to Audrey Kell. That was pretty cool. Especially considering that we've been just deprived of the ace so often, right? 
But meanwhile, Dynaclear versus Korn matchup, I love because Korn is my favorite swordy personally. Because she can turn into like like a big dragon thingy. And she also has like this like, bit, like, like the other like big charge thingy that she can just, you know, be like, mm, boom. But like that, but instead to the opponent, but Inkling wins. Ooh. Yeah, it kind of a feels bad. She uh, Corin just got paint rolled, literally just paint rolled. Meanwhile, we're heading back into round number two now, and already you can see some vandals coming out for Archer Kel. Mm hmm. Vandals is a is is a bold buy, but want to guess Archer Kel feel more than uh, comfortable investing in right? They want to ensure that they. Take more of a higher spot in the position as we get into week four and five. But the Nata, I guess, doesn't really go much of anywhere, but at least it lands them on the site. Neil before him, he takes one as enemy. Makes me back. And now you can see right now Wingull trying to hold the site down. Again, just doing a little bit of blind fire, trying to provide some cover. Meanwhile, Wingull still trying to find the Reen here out towards the side, but the KJ refuses to peek, and now the stun lands onto Wingull, and they're forced to back off. Mm. The Vandal in their hands makes it that much tougher as well. Artie Kelly Vesta not looking to pay off for her end, which has the actual gun here too. Well... Turret is all back around on them. The entry does not work out. No flash, nothing to cover. The drift to be taken. What? That's that's great for them. Yep. Meanwhile, we're looking in on our other Valorant match. Seems to be going down onto Fracture. And again, haven't seen that map in quite some time. Although not my favorite, still fun every now and again in small doses. I actually am enjoying Lotus just a wee bit more than Fracture. That's Cap. I enjoy it a lot more than Fracture. I'll be completely honest with you. Fracture is one of the maps that I ban. Let it be known. Oh, this is a nice one. Yeah, I I think Fracture is a strange map that teams just don't play at all. How how often than not? And, and Lotus is a much better alternative because. It makes really interesting games. Fracture is very push and pull. It's a lot more pull than push, where the pacing of it is really weird all across the board. Unless Wingman Plant will not go down, likely, unless the Omen stays in front of the cover. Just waiting for that to, go, to, to happen. And look at this. Right now, Kamichi Koala kind of not very committed to throwing out that wingman they're a little indecisive they wanted to do it they have the spike and you missed it ravish i, I think that uh we actually had a wingman uh plant already go down today so already it's a good day you're right you're right i i, I do remember it. uh it has happened and what's funny was in vct uh every single time uh uh, you know, they actually had a women plant go down. The entire crowd, like, cheered <laughs> for it, too, which was so funny. And every time it, it got stopped, they were like, oh, no. So it is great just to see the enthusiasm when it comes to Gecko and uh, and the plant of the little homie, in fact. We do left. love Wingman. Speaking of, Wingman's finally, Wingman does go out, but not before the stun goes out as well. And now the push is underway from Audrey Kell. One they do find eight. themselves in the 4v1. Only one player left standing, and Wingman is going to be able to get the plant down. Well done, Lil Homie. Is now Yikesani is going to have to come through with a retake on C. 3v1 after losing the previous Yikesani. Takes one. But 2v1 with no spike. This is a pretty undercover position. Yeah, especially on the C site there, because we know how difficult it is to retake that. But at the same time, your best bet is to just not push. Clearly, Yaksani looks as though that they're trying to save, and I really think you should probably just let them. Make sure you get the dub. Make sure the spike is beyond recovery. And now you can go ahead and push and try and get an exit frag. And with that being said, it is going to be a thrifty round answered by another thrifty round, this time coming from Audrey Kell. Mm-hmm. One after the next we go, they both continue to trade that, but that will lead and put Myers Park in a worse position than already Cal because of the buys. So they should, you know, in theory, snowball into another round for the attacking side. 
we only wait to see what happens because we, we've been proven wrong before. By the way, on the smash up between Corn and the Inkling, it has maintained even with 136 to 102, both at three stocks. Okay, never mind. Yep, it's currently three stocks to two now in the favor of Inkling, who has been having quite the field day. But finally, Corinne able to even things up at two stocks apiece, zero to zero. And the first elimination here on Lotus will go the way of Audrey Kell. They find one player from, My from Myers Park peeking just a little bit too much. Toxins going up. Double entry in with a blast pack to you. One towards the side, the KJ found. Wallbang not taken, but there we go. They're pushing the issue further and further as three of Myers Park are all center around the side out towards heaven and cannot find their way into. They can use the flash alongside the smoke to instantly closer and closer, which they have done right now, but they're all watching the angles. They'll make it a teammates. Yep, a well-executed round there, and it just goes to show that A is definitely a viable site here on Lotus. So we see a lot of concentration being made towards C, and for some reason B, I get B, you know, has definitely a more quicker access when it comes to trying to get the spike down quickly. You can get yourself some quick cash, but other than that, I'm not a big fan of the B site. A site, definitely a much better option, and you can see that it was executed perfectly uh, coming from the offense there. But now we're checking back with Providence versus Philip O'Berry here on Fracture. Fracture's strange, man. I still never understand just the pacing of it, too. Because this map, I do think, is due for some quality of life changes with just how the attackers can <laughs> enter sites. As with more that's got before, but the molly, the, just bait one out. And Providence playing in a two-person disadvantage. And, you know, I, I I completely agree with you talking about the quality of life changes because we did get some reworks for Fracture, but it was all on the A site, and we didn't show B any love, and that's where the majority of the action goes down. It's here on the B site. Thank you. One and go down as Fade will go out to cover the rest, and Philip O'Berry... A convincing okay. entry to play it off of careful consideration, checking close angles, using utility to bait the rest out, and the rest just snowballs into more. I wonder how that would sound with an Irish accent. Like, I can't do it, but here's my attempt. Philip O'Berry. I, <laughs> I don't. That's the best I got, but like, that's, that's what it bad. reminds me of. No, that's not bad. I respect it. Especially because it's how the sounds could be, right? So. It'll make sense, but still, down to a 4v4 right now for Artie Keller Myers Park. The spike goes down. Yeah, there it does. But meanwhile, this should be a decent retake, though, for Myers Park, and their best opportunity to do so, being that B has so many entryways here and a lot of opportunities to really get these cheeky sight lines red, so that way they can find just one shoulder peeking out maybe a little bit too far, but no, Wingull there to shut down at least one cheeky peek. But now look at Hold My Hand getting in on the action as the spike continues to tick away, trying to find yet another. They do, looking to get a third, but no, it's Gum who gets the eliminations and secures the round win for Ardry Kell. Ardry Kell now have a significant lead, although with three, but in Lotus, these things can snowball out of control pretty quickly as well, because that's, that's also now landing Myers Park in a save by type economy, right? Which you don't want to be, I like to call it the ping pong economy, which is only detrimental to what they want to be able to do. Ars Park right now holding pretty much default across the board, but I think Ardry Cal decided that it might be time to shift things over to C. Not going to have the spike in place, but instead looking to poke around first. Yeah, meanwhile, we're taking a look back at some smash, and that looks like Incineroar against who I first thought was Pyramithra, but is, is that Corinne again? It is. It is indeed Corinne again, yeah. How do you feel about uh, Corinne going up against Incineroar? I like Corinne. I, uh, man, I told you, bro. I am biased towards Corinne. She is my favorite sword in the entire game. Uh, plus, she has cool moves. So, I'm always going to hope for the Corinne win. The sounds fun as well. 
Yeah. Well, I hope for you, my friend. But we're getting back into some more Valorant here on Lotus. Round number six now well and underway. And it is a full push coming from Audrey Cal here onto C. Jeez. One taken, but that's still just in. A lot of damage being put down. A spike is from the plant set, but they're all currently set around the site and open angles too. So you're gonna have to choose to try to push against Myers Park just to make sure, just to maintain the integrity of the spike and to stay alive. Especially with where they planted as well. So tough angles. Oh, cast timing off the drone. There's still one more person there. Sees the omen. And Amory is doing the most for the team. You gotta love watching Valorant timing because they like continue to peekaboo through the smoke time and time again and they just walked past one another. But now it's a big opportunity for Anime to come through with an ace. They get the turn and they get the ace as well. That's the third ace of the day. On to the next we go, my friend. They just keep on doing it over and over. And what's a way to engage <laughs> with the rest of them it is uh it's impressive i'd say uh well uh for 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 start of rd cal with how they managed to just right there. find ways right there. to just get onto the site and then instead of trying to stay back a little bit they decide you know what no 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 mars park knows that we're at shell on site so they continue to push aggressively so i wonder if mars right park can find time for themselves where they can make it a bit more even well, let's see if they can get the job done. You can see the spike already heading towards B. Again, trying to find the quick plant here. Audrey Kell manages to find themselves on site and will send out Wingman. Looking for yet another Wingman plant. And it does get planted. And now Myers Park have to come through with the retake. The 5v5 rolling thunder across every single person on the site. And a flash delay, but it should just be it as one falls. But the rest of the members of Myers Park are all looking forward to the site. It's still a pass the smoke to Paranoia to go in, but they have not been able to find the push off of it either. RD Kell is a bit too far back, and they can continue to hold this position. None of them are clear. They find another shot. Black Adams take one more. It's a 5v1. Yikes, and he can't do anything else. And these are just fantastic plays being made by Audrey Kell. And this is where we're seeing the Cypher really come in handy. Because even going into this matchup, you know, we haven't seen a high pick rate for Cypher onto Lotus. But by accessing B, which honestly is one of the easier retakes, and utilizing Cypher, they have made it actually a hard site to retake now. Because they got the Cypher watching the flanks. And that's where you're most vulnerable when planning on the B site. So Audrey Kell definitely bringing some big plays with this Cypher pick here on Lotus. And I told you before, I'm a fan of the Cypher, man. The Cypher doing this thing. Like, it's just enough cover and information that it allows Ardry Kell to know where they gotta peek and where they gotta find the people on site. That's enough, but that's a tough that's a rough pickoff to over push so far up and the jet there for the cover to see one more. I hold my hand, needs to get out of dodge. I love how gun heavy Audrey Kell is. And I love how quick they are to throw out the utility. The jet had already dashed away. They didn't know that, so they literally just threw all the utility. The snake bite, the nades, and everything else. Everything but the kitchen sink. And jet had already been long gone. But still, love it. Absolutely love the gung-ho nature of Audrey Kell. As now they find themselves in a 3v5 here on A-Main. Audrey Kell getting too picked off early, not having the ability to wingman plant, nor their cypher either. Is gonna make things so much tougher. They're gonna have to kind of just like dry walk in and two going down. Makes it so that this round seems almost null for Audrey Kell. Yeah, you guys also get seen. Hold my hand. He's a spike, and that should be it. Yeah, definitely should be. Only one player remaining for Audrey Kell in a 1v4 scenario. And they don't have Spike. You can see already they're trying to get out of dodge. Their intel has been given away. Anime now going towards B and gets gunned down from behind by Yaxani. And that will be a round win for Myers Park. Much needed round. But one, they can be very happy with two because it should help them stabilize a little bit. Meanwhile... We have two small boys fighting up against one another. 
one has powers and one can grow trees. <laughs> Growing trees is a power. It is the most important power. Only you can prevent forest fires by chopping down trees. <laughs> That's cap. That's a lie. Don't chop down trees. That's, don't, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, it is interesting to see Ness going up against Villager, considering that they have the same build as Villager, unfortunately, goes down off the side and costs themselves a stock. But let's head back to the action here on Lotus. Hop on in, Barber's Pit available for Archery Cal if they want to use the post plant, but Lockdown's still there around the side. A lot of tools currently towards their benefit. The spike is planted at the same spot as before, but once again, it'll put them in a position where they have to kind of stay on site or they have to push against Archery Cal. The spike wasn't planted just yet, but that's kind of kind of rude the timing for them to find a way outside. Hearts free merely put out, but it's not actually against any of the util there. They'll find one more. They're looking to delete it. Yeah, there you go. Lockdown is destroyed. No one's there for the cover. One more foul. Wingle, two huge picks. And Ardry Keller getting pincer. Yep, that they are. And you can see how many ults have been invested into this round. And Audrey Kell so far making the most of it. But look at this. Yikes, Sonny with two, three big eliminations. But that spike, again, continuing to take away. They're not going to be able to do much with it. And that is going to be another round win for Audrey Kell. But I got to say, again, a nice wingman attempt. And finally, you will see Yikes, Sonny go down. Both Black Adam and Yikes, Sonny with a four-piece there. Do you want to dance? And Audrey Kell can now just take his momentum towards possibly getting it in 9-3 half for themselves, right? Byers Park, the way they challenged things before was finding an early pickoff too, just to completely shut down and that could happen, but instead, no cheeky push-up this time. They're still staying a bit safer. And Audrey Kell has a love for that mistake as well, so they're not completely moving off and leaving one person on the island either on the attack. Off they go. Nothing found with the util of the gecko, but right there. Instead, it'll just be right slow there. walk in. The jet is there by baby door. They're watching it. You're just as you push against exactly. them instead, a wingle gets found. That's gonna be a huge little theft. Yeah, and right now, Audrey Kell once again just on a pretty decent start here, hovering around towards B as Myers Park again gonna uh, gonna have to operate from a deficit here. Now three v five, and I gotta tell you, Audrey Kell definitely having the most success I have seen of a team here on the B side as as anime will find another elimination through the paranoia. Absolutely fantastic. A couple more around the corner as uh, anime continues to hunt for him. Kimchi Koala waiting around. Ooh, yeah, Sandy a bit better on the swing. Still a four v two right now for Myers Park, and it's just Andy left alive. Well, now for the side of Myers Park, there is no one left alive. It's going to be another round win going to Audrey Kell as we get ready to head into round number eleven. And Audrey Kell, once again, having a fantastic time here on to Lotus. And this has been a map that they have constantly just performed very well on time and time again. Just a fresh reminder, Audrey Kell currently 3-0 in the standings. Myers Park 2-1. So Audrey Kell looking to keep their undefeated streak alive. And Myers Park looking to give them their first loss. It's highly possible, but Audrey Cal is and has maintained a bit, uh, has maintained the dominance a bit too heavily, and I think that's a this is the biggest reason why they're just so confident in their gunplay. Although they may lose a couple here or there, but who does it right? Okay. <laughs> By the way, spike should go down now. Black Gun pushing his bolt. What was that swing? Are you joking, man? Oh, no, that's no joke coming from Audrey Kell. It's just another spike plant. Meanwhile, they do have a pretty even 
uh, player count here, 4v4, Myers Park now trying to get the retake as the stun does go out, Black Adam, a little worse for wear here, they are able to shake off the blind, now going through the smoke, and they get gunned down as Audrey Kell is now down to the lone gecko. Gotcha. one oh my god can't you call up the way we play more and more and he's done up to the lane he just said not swing but instead i know he's gonna want to though that's what matters a clutch i'm kidding chi and then they had to throw wingman under the bus and you know what i'm gonna go ahead and say it wingman for president you know why wingman never fakes Wingman never fakes. Wingman for no. president. Wingman can't fake. I don't think it's actually allowed for him to fake. Exactly. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Scott crazy. Bradway. Bradway. You know, I'm glad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're using this to right help make the country a better place. Yeah. With Wingman. Good on you. Right yeah. <laughs> Remember. I'll, I remember kids watching. Every vote counts. So make sure to vote when you can. Right, make it a five. Nice push out and no trades to be had. Just like that. Hard to count. Lose half the roster of the round. Yeah, that they do, and not a good look right there for Ardra Kell, but remember, they were in similar dire straits and were able to pull out a dub, and of course, it's going to be Gecko with the wingman. Trying to get the plant there, looking to stick it there onto the B site. Kimchi Koala does poke out, and they manage to find one head click, and now it's all even 2v2. Until it wasn't. Yeah. I don't know how he keeps doing it. Oh. He almost didn't get caught in that, and if he doesn't, then he actually might be might have been able to clutch that again, making it a 10-2. Kimchi Koala almost for the double. Yep, it was a good round win coming from Myers Park, but it was also expensive, if I wasn't mistaken. We saw the lockdown. Well, you know, again, it was at the half. <laughs> so, prices be darned, spare no expense. But, yeah, they had to use two ultimates in order to ensure that win there for Myers Park. And that's the way you want to end out the round. And you can see we're going into the second half now with the dreaded 9-3 curse on the board. Let's see if Myers Park can now answer back on the offensive side of the spike. Charlie Apostle, we've seen two 9-3s today, and those in itself have actually turned out pretty good for uh, for both sides, right? I mean, they managed to make a comeback as well, but the one that was up uh, did continue to maintain the dominance, but only after a really hard-fought battle, but, and that on its own just gives us some good old battle, which is what we want. I think RG Caldo may be a bit opposed to that vision, so they're starting to push all the way up on A. Hold my hand, might be privy to that though. And you know, we're seeing Viper becoming more and more viable here on Lotus just because that Viper wall not only covered A, but it covered B as well. And it was just a great lineup there uh, coming from Audrey Kell. But now Myers Park playing ever so slowly. Gonna try and make the slow push here happen on A main and one peak coming out from Rand. But not much doing there as the wall goes right back up. Said, would you dash back in? Drop the spike. And with nobody being caught early on, though, it'll. It's a bit of a different look from Argicel. What I find would have been way more inclined to just try to push against Myers Park and try to outgun them. But instead, now, to rely on the Yanker of their Cypher and choose instead to just put pressure on them as they're losing more and more space. Look at how far they pushed the butter B as well, too. Right there. And again, C is just so important because of how difficult it is to retake. So you do right need there. to have a sensory type or even, you know, the lockdown of KJ to really go and make sure C stays within your possession. Meanwhile, you can see the push going over towards B and the trades already being made. But is it too little too late? Ten seconds left and only the KJ remains. Yikesani does get one but can't get two. Ooh. That is going to be the round. Starting things off in the second half for Ardry Kell. And there is no need for you to push against them if they just come to you when they are out of options. A much 
much better result to the match that I think they were definitely hoping for. Audrey Cal now up 10 on their bonus. Could easily make it 11, and they just got to play the same position. It's got to stuff out Myers Park, who are five stacked up. And yeah. I think they're going to want to aggressively push out. And they're going to want to try and get a main back into their favor here. But let's see if the Viper's Wall is there again. And it is. And this is being a real nuisance right now to the side of Myers Park because they can't really find an avenue here to, to make it to A. So their only options, for the most part, are B and C. And they're being read out every single time. But they're going to stick over here towards A main and try and get an early pick. Right here. to see if anybody goes off the sound cue of the orb, but so the Viper playing a bit off site can easily just put up the snake bite, slow them down but double smoke dog knows they have to push in and so they see one off the concussion, paranoia not able to be out in time and it was seconds, mere seconds of them entering and they all got to exit out of there Yep, once again, Audrey Kell just doing what they do best, and they're sweeping up B-Site. Whether it's on the attacker side or the defensive side, I feel like Audrey Kell just has the best map knowledge of B that I've seen so far here on Lotus. Mm-hmm. They keep on doing it, man. I don't know what it is about the B-Site, but Audrey Kell has it down to a T. I think, I think, I think we have talked about this before, that... B is just strange because if you don't just have like two of your exits covered or you're or you, or you can't get out of sight immediately, being stuffed into that little weird circle is not ideal. And, and this uh, big green wall here from Viper definitely not ideal for Myers Park as now they're going to force the issue. They're going to peek out and get the early pick which they desperately needed. Myers Park now with an opportunity here as they do find a trade, giving themselves still that advantage for V3. Black Adam now on the rotation, going back towards mid, but the spike making its way still ever consistent towards A. Standing ahead. Three, two v four. Hardly can lose a lot. Ooh, the stack up was gonna be tough. They might have been able to take more, but now in a three v two, two v three though, the health bars of Mars Park are a little bit rough. For hold my hand at thirteen health is gonna, gonna have to play very far back, just to not get caught. And they spread themselves across the site. Yep, that they do. Audrey Kell now with a very doable retake here, but Myers Park have been playing this round very well, and they've been managing to really land their shots. But Gum with the wall bang through the box. Wow, and now it's a 1v1, both players with little to no health remaining. And it is an open sight, though, so hold my hand. Can't look to peek out. It's the win goal. What a swing. It's like he knew. Really impressive. Audrey Kell is not dominant for no reason. That was a fantastic swing. And again, the Viper showing why they're viable here on Lotus. And, you know, the argument definitely being made for them to be a key component on this map as now we get ready to take a time out coming from Myers Park as they find themselves on match point. But let's check back in with Providence going up against Philip O'Berry. Did you, did you need to do that? I didn't need to, but I, I kind of want to practice it. You know what? Now that. Because if I'm going to do it, I want to do it at least better. You know? Uh, it's, you know, I, I want you to practice, but I also don't know if I want to experience it. That's all. <laughs> That's okay, because I don't know if I want to either. Meanwhile, we're heading back to Super Smash. Once again, it's a battle of the young boys. It's going to be Ness going up against Villager. Uh, that's just... We, we were talking about some matchup before. I find Ness is just like way more rushed down, a little bit too aggressive. The villagers can't handle it. Villager needs set up. And I think uh, he experienced that now. The baseball bat should not reach, so that was... Bit of 
I miss spacing, but oh, he goes into the tree. What? <laughs> you see, planting trees not only saves lives, but it takes them. <laughs> That's crazy, you know, and, and just the fact that he's from a game called Mother Earth as well, too. You, you, you would just think that he would have, uh, he would have just like, he would have just had like something going on a bit better. Either way, 5v3 as it stands, you get the two of them. A flawless to take it, dominance all around. A 13 to 3 on Lotus. Yeah, but now Audrey Kell going to be sitting pretty on the top of the leaderboard with a 4-0 record as they find their fourth win, continuing their undefeated streak. Meanwhile, we're heading back into Smash to see Ness take on Little Mac. All right, all right. A bit more of an interesting matchup. Both, both just big rushdown characters as well, so uh, this should be a, a lot more hyper-aggressive than what we expected to be, but... They're both space so safe. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and to me, Ness has actually got a lot more zoning capability than any in any comparison to Little Mac. Little Mac is just the glass cannon of brawlers. So they get in and they get out just as quickly. Very speedy. can deliver a lot of damage very quickly, especially when the go punch, or I'm sorry, the KO punch is activated. And Ness being not the beefiest character does not take much to eliminate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Ness is a Ness is a pretty small little boy. So there's a So to leave them time to just push out and zone the little Mac, which is exactly what's happening too. He's getting bounced around. Yeah, I think Little Mac is going to have to really utilize the speed that they come with in order to get the upper hand over Ness. Meanwhile, they do force the offstage, but they miss the follow-up, and then they get punished for the whiff. The first stock goes away now for Little Mac. Wow, Little Mac just is getting dominated right now, man. Just can't find a single hit against the Ness, who just has a complete read on exactly what he wants to do at each and every single moment. And look at this too, yeah. It's grab after grab, play after play, just not even allowed to land. This is rough. Yeah, nice up air for Ness to get the second stock off of Little Mac. And now only one remains as Ness is setting themselves up for a three stock dub. Now following up here, center stage and does get a haymaker to the face, but they're going to recover. At least one back though, but a one stock advantage maintains right now for the nest, and I think he's gonna take full advantage of that. As already the little Mac is at 56. Yeah, that they are, but you gotta watch the danger because that KO punch is right around the corner, and all it takes is one nice grapple coming from the little Mac, able to follow it up. He had another forcing nest off stage, but the PK fire does manage to land, and now the KO punch also activated. My best friend. Oh, he misses, gets the recovery, and bounces him off again. He's just playing with him. But, yeah, we get the stage control again. Oh, Max's timing stops him in the middle. And now both of them are in positions where they can just get taken out. Yeah, and unfortunately, you know, coming from the side of the Little Mag, they had quite the unfortunate ledge whiffs and nearly getting eliminated there, but no, does find their way back to stage and is able to turn things around and take the second stock off of Ness, but is it too little, too late? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, unfortunately, that's the, the, the advantage was a bit too large. And now instead, we'll look towards Providence and P.O.B., for their 8-6 faction match. Well, here we go. As you can see, Providence on the offensive side of the spike. Looked as though they were going to make an attempt over at B, but no, the rotation is now completely underway. Koss, I think, gave them some information saying that A looked okay. It looked safe, but let's see how true that is. You're nothing. Oh. And that's one the spray of the smoke that works out too is impressive. But I was looking to hold out the entire site. So watch the entrance, they heard the door. Cast pushing is bold against two. It will naturally get taken down. 
as the rest of the members are all just giving away singles one by one, trying to hide behind cover. I feel Bavaria he has to look to push at some point. Or the next to C1, no fault line, and that's it. I do think it was actually really interesting that Providence, after sticking the spike and getting the plant down, that they really did not disperse. They all stood around the spike and held their ground. You know, none even went up top towards heaven. They all stayed down low. They didn't go uh, back over towards a main, and nobody tried to push the issue. And they were really grouped up, leaving themselves vulnerable for any type of utility, but or, or even the mollies. And yet, they managed to come out on top. Providence definitely not backing down in the face of opposition. Uh, against Philip O'Berry. Mm-hmm. Nothing continues to be stopped. Momentum abundant, and the little Mac this time not getting bounced around as much, but this might be where the one-stock advantage continues to reign for Ufra Kid. Yeah, meanwhile, you can see the KO punch no longer available. Didn't find the opportunity, but they are landing some nice dash attacks. Trying to follow it up with a haymaker. Can't get it to go. And now, once again, Ness in control. Nice back throw gets the elimination. And it will be only one stock left for Little Mac. Mm hmm. Little Mac, at least. You know, trying to survive for now. But it all leave them in the same position they were in the last time. Little Max, he just cannot find the pace against the Ness. He's just a bit too slippery. Yep, and Ness has really been utilizing a lot of the up tilts and the up smashes to deal a lot of this damage, and we haven't really seen Little Mac try and counter or punish those those up airs at all. Meanwhile, the KO punch does get activated again, but I don't know if they're going to get the chance to use it as Ness again hits the up tilt, putting them up in the air. No follow-up, though, and now Little Mac just one solid hit away from going into the blast zone, and I think that was just going to about do it for that matchup. Five before on the second once again. No command available. Cast moving around, and the same double peak that happened previously. I guess the same two people, but unfortunately this time was Pincer managed to get out with one. And them on the side, Brizzo, giving away the position. Have to put the double peak against two more members. As the rest of Providence are all playing off site, they just get swung upon one after the next. CK gets pushed. Heat Enjoyer. Finds a shot, but it'll put them against an official where they're, where they're just defusing. They get it to half. And the most crucial part of this. Yep, you can see the spike oh, ticking away. I don't think they're going to have the time nor the life to actually get the defuse. As that will be yet another round win for Providence. They put themselves in the double digits. Yeah. Put them in a timeout once again. It's 10 to 6 as of right now, so got lots of recover because it seems that no matter how close they get, things just get farther and farther. And now we check back in with the smash action, and you could see Joker now coming out to take on Little Mac. And so far, so good. The damage percentage much in their favor. Nice little forward air to get them off stage. And now the recovery simply is not there for Little Mac, and they will go down one stock early. Yep, back this music in the background is a bit too happy. I like for it. For what's actually happening in front of me. <laughs> no, I agree with you 110%, but at the same time, you know, seeing someone's face get bashed in, maybe they have a smile with the music. I was I was thinking too that I'm like uh that as music was going on, I'm like, is this like it seems like they're falling into the park? But that's simply just not true. Oh, uh, but it's that. Ooh, nice up smash, and uh, that should be it. So you're making it two to two stacks. Yep, nice little down throw into the up B, getting uh, Little Mac their first stock off of the Joker pick. Meanwhile, we're heading right back into the action between Providence and uh, Philip Berry. 
here in round number 17. Out goes the Leer trying to start things off. They get rid of the KO Dagger, and Koss, even while blinded, finds an elimination. Insane from Koss as well, who found incredible value, but it's somehow the Brimmy every single time to shut them down, extending, overheating a bit too much each time they find something. And on a 4v3, well, 2 now, POB has a chance to take this, they have the Brimstone Altar as well, if they wanted to be able to find people on site, ooh, this could be the way to do it. It very well could be, meanwhile you have Yeet and Joyer trying to get the job done here for Providence, they fire through the smoke, not finding much, but they throw out the haunt now, and they manage to find the Brimstone, great read there, coming from the fade. Ooh. And the last shots end it all 11 to 6 between Providence and POB. They're now in a position looking to close things out. Purple Berry has a one final buy remaining for themselves before they do have to, you know, evidently get the broken buy. But two ultimates still remain the orbital strike, and of course, their own Empress if they want to use it. Yeah, and did you see that trade right there in Smash? Literally, the Little Mac and the Joker took each other out at the exact same time. And it wasn't even from, from a fast fall. It was just from a, a trade. I rarely see that happen, honestly. More often when both parties lose a stock, it's from a downfall or just a, a fast fall or just a, um, a failed recovery. So that was actually interesting to see. Both of them trade smashes there for two stocks. Uh, again, just a nice exchange there as we get the action back underway here on Fracture. And Bristol coming all the way around. They have the Orbital Strike on the site. So much stands for every single member there. Not Even George has to stay alive, but Faye taken. And now it's one person left against four and the position found. I don't know what else he could do here, honestly. He doesn't have the ultimate. They're just going to defuse it. Do exactly that. A little bit too late. I think they might have saved their ult, though. It looked like they were trying to call in the Rolling Thunder, but was eliminated before they can use it. Yeah, they still got it. So, I guess, happy accidents, yeah? Yeah, you know, I respect it. Not bad. Right here. Oh, uh, but... Right here. You know, yeah, it'll... It's still uh, a decent amount of ground to cover, though, before they can even things up for themselves. But, hey, Little Mac won, though. Yay. Yep, they sure did. Fantastic job. Little Mac gets a dub on the board, and now Philip O'Berry are within four of equalizing against Providence as we get this next round underway. And the spike heading over towards B. Launching here. 5 is there to the site. And the push up from Castle never disappoints, but. Now they have to stay alive so far. Brizzle finally finds the flank he's looking for. One enemy remaining. This is Providence pushing it to match point. Yeah, and it feels bad that Philip O'Berry has one player that's AFK, disconnected, whatever the case may be. Just because it just makes things a little lackluster. And, and it's just so unfortunate. You hate to see it in a ranked match, and even more so in a competitive setting. As Koss going for a deep flank here, finds it no problem. Providence now on match point. Match point. And like you're saying, yeah, it, it's just tough when you just have, you know, playing a 4v5, but they have done a good job of just looking to hold out for as long as they can. But here now, I think Providence should be able to close things out. Yep, meanwhile, we take a look at the smash action there on the top right of your screen, and it's going to be Sephiroth now coming in, trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Little Mac on small battlefield. Or is that regular battlefield? I think it might be regular. I was regular. Regular, regular battle. Regular to me, yeah. Uh, either way. Use that, enter off the site. Shot to the array, they put on the second layer. And the cast, corner D push on forward, but it's in the tower position found. And it's, once again, 5v2. And the current standings, GG's to Philbo Barry. 
remaining. Yeah, Koss is just insanely gunny. And then they they were gonna bring the orbital strike to take out the AFK player. Come on. <laughs> Wild, but nonetheless, POB did hold off for as long as they could, but unfortunate circumstances have landed us here. Nonetheless, my friend. And as of course in a nest set, we have a lot more Smash and Valorant to go to look with nowhere.
Hey, hi, what's up? Welcome back. I'm Ravish. That's Cap. Let's get into it. Valorant, smash. That's that. <laughs> yep, starting off quick with the intros and quick with the Valorant. We're already here on Ascent, which is a little bit more inclined to what we're used to here. You know, this is what we're used to seeing. This is the 50-50 map. This is the neutral zone. This is where disputes are settled. And now we have Olympic versus the Palisades. All right, yeah, let's go. Olympic versus the Palisades. What is that voice I'm doing? I like it. <laughs> it's strange. I've never done it really before, but it's a it's a fascinating time. You sounded like a uh, villain. <laughs> I'm gonna take your cat and I'm your money. You. No. <laughs> that's the truth. Someone <laughs> save us. I'm gonna sign you up for 10 mortgages that you can't afford. <laughs> I'm gonna download Raid Shadow Legends on your phone. <laughs> Wait, that's a good thing. I love Raid Shadow Legends. Palisades, I'm sure, might as well, but there's a 4v4 on the air to the side, B side on their side. It's Sasagio. He's waiting on the side. He sees so many. If he had a phantom here to clear his butt, this is so tall. Almost gets two. The one is enough, but so is the damage on the other. Yep, yeah, and now the trades are going underway. You can see that even or Evan Titan there over on boxes able to get a couple of wall bangs. Not able to confirm, but enough to kind of scare off the Palisades as the spike continues to take away. And what a wall bang coming from Evan Titan. How did they even get that read? Uh, it's. I feel like you, 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 you just have to know that like they're right there. You just you just privy to the information that they're around the corner. You have to ensure that like okay okay, I just swing and I and you make the biggest brain play of all time. I mean it was definitely uh, one of the more impressive wall bangs I think I've ever seen in Valorant. Like that was through like in the middle of the wall there was it was no edge it was no corner it was straight through the middle fantastic and a beautiful read there coming from evan titan but now we're getting into round 17 and it looks as though the spike heading over towards a and you have uh sasageo heading over towards tree mm -hmm. as they continue on uh, watch it forward But just blind shots through the smoke. It's a saga waiting yeah. around. The smoke is gonna expire. They get found. But with this, they have the option to just continue moving. They find some cover and cannot One enemy remaining. convert it into more. That is a three against one for the Palisades. Yep. And who else but Evan Titan to get the last elimination? You know? Who else? Who else would have did it? Who else could have done it to get the last head click on that omen? It had to be Evan. Yeah, it's... It just had to be him. Naturally so. But... Olympic now stands up tall. Guns with their hands up as well, but that's on the Palisades for trying to contend against it. And it's Viet who has it. It's chilling over by A, it's chilling over by B, but the position's over by A instead, looking to re-hit here once more. And they have the orb reflect to clear out the side, nothing big otherwise though. And you can see they are bringing the spike again over towards A. No intel being shared, they were able to avoid detection, Omen Smoke. Of course, gonna be on Archway, not really making a push, but once again, take a look, they got two. They got two going up towards mid and up towards tree. Not really finding any peaks, though. They're just going to have to settle with the smoke for now. But it's still a similar game strat coming from Olympic as we just seen in the previous round. Hmm. Still playing it, though, to move it out. Mm. Our fortune timing on the cross. With no cover, no setup, making the lurk happen with the jet makes it that much tougher. Especially now with the neural thefts, the position has been found. It's still pretty neutral, but they see the stack around A and all the move over. This will be the perfect time to actually reposition. Yeah, absolutely, but surely you can see Sasageo heading over towards Tree and the plant going down. A nice swamp nade coming from Evan Titan again as now the Palisades are going to have to play post plant here and try and get the retake onto the A site. Oh, 
So, oh, 4v2 as things end up. Just the complete the lockdown is enough. Sasaki here with three. Now in a 1v1, no dash available. Has a blade storm. The spike is ticking down. It is on him to just simply survive. The dash is going to use. But he's just. He's wasting his time. They want to get it to half. He's pretty far in the angle. He sees it and the clutch is crazy. Oh, wow. You guys suck. I'm sorry, but <laughs> jibated. 100% jibated. They used the dash, pulled them off the spike, and then tried to use the gunfire. They didn't bite for the second one, but that was just so much fun to watch. You, We literally just watched uh, Sasageo play with their food. And now Olympic, right? They're not as 1-0 up as we look at JT Williams versus South Mech. 5-0. A side of ice blocks their defense looks impenetrable yeah it's definitely looked that way and it seems as though they're gonna fake here i mean not much of a fake i mean the bulldogs are reigning true for stabs dealing damage to the ice wall but it's just gonna be another slow push and thanks to the kill feed we can see jt williams able to find one elimination and they are doing just fine and they're sitting comfortable right where they are <laughs> Spike. spike down a yeah they just cannot find anything there too just stage out of the open gets picked off but oh so this is a lot more possible right now this the eight side defense was completely taken out as the rest of them are looking to rotate in past this past spawn so can't willingly but left. spike in their hands c1 spike that's dropped and now only Stebs remains, and they know exactly where they are. This is just the worst position to be in, especially when you don't have spike. You can't rotate. Only a, a few seconds remaining. Just trying to get some blind fire going, but poor Stebs can't find the answer. And now we're heading back to Olympic versus Palisades here on Ascent. Olympic have such control with the Palisades they have for so long, but the Palisades have had a hard fought half of the round. But oh, little bit overzealous. The flash is stopped them from pushing it, but still chilling over by the logs. They find the Util kill instead. Facebook friend. It's a nice start, making it one for one, but that's Sky for the Jet. Yeah, and I, I got to tell you, that was actually a pretty a pretty impressive nade there. Again, making sure that they were able to keep that that area clear, at least for a moment. As you can see, the Palisades already back in market and through the door. And yeah. now one player getting picked out. Evan Titan also to be gunned down. And they look, they're looking to stay alive for another round here, Cap. The Palisades, it was seemed as though that they might have had all the control, but... Oh, one another push like this, and they can't actually force them into a save. Yep, that they can. Palisades now on the right track here in order to try and make this comeback happen. It's a five-game differential. And meanwhile, over towards Smash, you have Mario versus Game & Watch. And Game & Watch barely able to recover there. Oh, apologies. That was... Uh... That's not Mario. That is a me sortie. I don't know why I thought it was Mario. It's the small screen. You know what? I'm going to blame it on the small screen and the fact that I'm half blind in my left eye. So that's what I'm blaming it on. That is, you know, valid excuse. That makes sense. But you should run. it's a the sortie and the rest we can focus on a little bit later. Our security. The Rolling Thunder stopped it from entering the site completely. Uh, this guy down, did it previous in sight. They switched positions. Pyramids, if he doesn't get this, this might be another round. Shilling inside the switch trying to find the timing, down. and that's it. They take another Sasagio coming around the mid, but he's a bit too late for the party. They don't have the spike. They're cornered on site, and the Palisades, another round in their hand. Well, if anyone can come in clutch in this 3v1, it is Sasageo. we already seen them do some tremendous work. Let's see if they can come in clutch and make a miracle happen here to put an end to this game here on Ascent. They throw out one smoke, takes a couple of blind fires, but not much doing as time continues to take away.
30 seconds left. 3v1 between the rest. To find the rest is so tough with angles that are holding. Two were bunched up and now in a smoke, only an updraft and a couple blade storms that are watching. Both stairs and speedway. Ten seconds left. He clears close, but all chung up by a boat off. He went to find the most golly transfer. And it said this can't happen. It was a good try, though. Fantastic effort. Meanwhile, we're looking at Smash, and both players are literally one solid hit away from taking the dub, both on their last stock and in the danger in the red. A game and watch a little worse for wear, and that back throw could be it! And it is! It will be the me, Sword Fighter, to come through and take the dub over game and watch as we get ready to head now into round 21 between Olympic and Palisades. And like I said, it's Olympic right now. They're on the save. If this continued happening, it would lead to this. And they can look to buy up next round. They have the Blade Storm alongside the Hunter's Fury, but it doesn't necessarily be possible for them to get much. And the Palisades, their econ is doing wonderfully. But the round after round, they've gotten in their belt. Shinada Mages, how do they enter? Caught by the trip wire immediately shot down. They find the information, neural theft there. They sniff it all out, and they're going to get caught in the middle. Facebook friend as well, too. The lurk taken away. What can they do? Oh, there's so many people in front of them. Yeah, that's it. There you go. That'll do the trick. Flash lands in time, but now nah, there's a trade. What's more, I'm impressed. I gotta say, I was a gun for a couple of seconds, and now in the three v three, I needed to call it quits. I thought there was no shot they had. This the Olympic just seemed like you know maybe they're gonna forego this round, wait for the buy, but instead, they've somehow been incredible in the people they found. The op now also down. It's 2v1, it's one up top, they seem by heaven. Plank can't go down, it's up, it's pyramids. And a 1v1 against LEGO Legends. 17 seconds, he's gonna get tagged, he has the Hunter's Fury. He's not going to escape, you know exactly where he is. It's a matter of patience and time, double ping down, he's gonna look past Jenny. And wait for him to swing first, find the timing, maybe he sees it, LEGO Legends with a clutch. I was honestly anticipating the Hunter's Fury to come out. I mean, why not at that point? You know exactly where they are. It's game point. You could go for it all, but no. They decide to relinquish the round and put Palisades that much closer to finding the Equalizer. But it was a very expensive round. They lost four players in the process, so that's four players they're going to have to rebuy. Meanwhile, Olympic, having gone through a save round, should have a enough to actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Palisades as we get ready to head into round 22. Wild that they have continued to push us this far. But the fact that that round was that close is on its own an incredible thought. A lot of vested enough for Olympic side, Blades from still there, and so are the Seekers for the, for, for, for the Palisades. Revealing area. They can't use those if they want to figure out the position early or if they want to use that for aggressive push past the post plant, which there hasn't been a ton of that. Well, now you can see a little bit of a split push here. You got three in mid, two uh, from Olympic heading over towards B main, and no one contesting. The doggo does go out. They check the corners, and they find Facebook friend. This start off is nice, but everyone's staying alive for now. Ooh, Pyramids with a risque peak. No match. Not actually getting punished, but uh, still taking on the other side. Nice flash to face a friend to a lot of the side. Pass the smoke and just gets timing. Yes, he's one more. Ryan Dell is good for the trade, but it's a 2v3. Yeah, things are looking really interesting here in round 23. Meanwhile, it's going to be Evan Titan back over towards B main along with the Jet. Play. Have a little friendship, a little company there to. To give them and give them some support. Meanwhile, they have their eyes focused and fixed on market. Out goes the smoke, but will it be enough? Sasageo again, going to be the one to try and lead the charge. Going towards market, they know where the shots are coming from. Cipher is there, 
Not going to make the swing just yet. They're going to allow for the plant to go down. Out goes the peak, and they pick up one, but can't get two. It's now a 2v1. Using that, oh. From the shadows to discern the position exactly. And it allowed the Palisades round after round to keep themselves in this game. The closest game we've had by far in this day. They are so close to pulling things back. Yeah, and you know, this is looking like it might go into extra rounds here. We might find OT because once again, it seems as though Olympic are going to have to either scrape something together or it's going to be another save round. And I think they might just have enough, bare minimum, to try and answer back here. But if they don't, then we should more than likely see a, a an overtime situation here on a set. It's entirely possible. Sasagio has snuck past the dart. Flip is a running, so we'll choose instead to go right out to sight, and no one is covering it this time. It has been in previous rounds. Olympic has just unfortunately been caught and taken down one by one when they've been here, but with the lockdown that they have, they just play off site, and they need to leave. They got the pants on leave for in terms of the Palisades, but. Yeah, centered on the outside, falling upon the timing. As the rest of them all fall in, Hunt is for you to clear out. Close corner, one more shot to be able to do it. No, but they didn't have to dodge at all. As Handy with the final, looking to see the entrance be main covered. A 4v2, the Olympic. Round after round, with we're getting taken down, they finally do, and the classic almost takes it all. I mean, the classic did at the end. It was the classic that ended up getting the final elimination. So I guess the old adage is true to switch to your sidearm because it is faster than reloading. Meanwhile, what was a 13 10 is now a 10 0. Uh, for JT, believe the South Mac is just one person. As LA is just. Running around back and forth the zip line. It's a 4v1. And that's a 10 to 1 at least. Well, there we go. That's a nice change of pace there. Uh, I mean, being able to get one on the board, it was looking really grim at 10 to nil. As now we go yeah. into the last round of the first half. And look at this. There's an op and an Odin on the board. Mm-hmm. A lot of options. But, no, of course, this is the last round of the half. And them winning that our South Mech side is essential so that way they can have some sort of eco go into the buy. And the last null command available so that can just completely reduce all the killjoy util completely void need to be if they want to if they want to use that for aggressive push instead the killjoy is looking to move up through mid find some information there and they have made their way onto the site and they also have that Viper's Pit there, too, if, if they need it. And there it goes. They're going to call it in, and they're going to send the full util and all of the ultimates that they had. Unfortunately, it was just the Viper's Pit. Mm -hmm. As now the retake is underway, coming from JT Williams. Yep. No command, Viper's Pit. Uh, and more. They just completely lock things down. They pushed up a bit you too far, though. As they all walk in, they're just defusing. It's at half. Iron and Tay to take three. And hey, Snake, we're just one more. And they cannot hold it any further. It's a bit too much contention. It's at half. And they know there's one more person there. That, that purple outline should be coming through. Nice swing. But can they find more? No. It's Rory's heart. Stop the reward to 11. And they really had to throw everything at that one again. They used the attacker KJ. They had to come through with the Viper's Pit. And, uh, you know, it really was an expensive round. And even throughout the exchange, they did lose a uh, few of their players in the process. So it, it definitely took everything they had. Meanwhile, we're getting ready to head into the first game. Of, well, the first round, rather, of the second half. It's back to the pistols. And JT Williams still sitting with an eight-round lead over South Mac. 
an incredible start, but these two pistols are essential for South Mech if they want to stay in this game. If they can find it, they know that at least they'll have a massive return for not only a bit of a confidence boost, but also the weaponry naturally that they do so, so essentially need. Well, here we go. The push is underway, and you can see the spike making its way towards the ace site. Out goes the KO dagger, but gets destroyed before anyone gets suppressed. They now get blocked off by the KO molly, but again, not much doing here. A lot of utility coming out early. Can't use that yet. Selling just one to be taken. I think South Mech have got a pretty good grasp on how to play this on the defense. <laughs> Moss, ooh, a close encounter, but one that ultimately results in their favor. There's many more to go up against, though, and it's still a 4v3 for JT Williams. Yep, that it is. Meemaw, the spike will be planted on the B site rather quickly, and they're going to get out of dodge just as fast. Meanwhile, South Mech is going to be coming through Kitchen with Dinah in order to find themselves back on site. Out goes the Poison Orb, and so does the Snakebite pushing Indigo away from Yellow. Yeah. A nice that shock dart. It is, it is 1v3. Their, their, their health bars are so low. Has a Snakebite. Just wants to be able to get one down, but there's a bit too many people. They're just going to defuse. Rory's heart has to get off for a couple more, but they have it at half. Once again, nothing more can be found, and that's it. Yeah, man, it was a decent solid try coming from JT Williams, but South Mech just refuses to go down. As we look at a little bit of smash here, and it looks like we're going to have Corinne going up against Lucas. More like that. As you know, my bias has, of course, uh, been maintained a bit very obvious quite some time, but... Now for Lucas versus Kern, they both have blonde hairs, but one has powers and one kind of has powers. Hmm. Wonder who wins. Yeah, well, let's see. I mean, right now, Lucas is looking pretty good with that one stock advantage, but easy come, easy go. That stock advantage is no mo. Hmm. Unfortunate, but you know what? Who needs an extra stock anyways when you can just take no damage at all, right? So make sure you don't get hit, and your opponent does. Simple. You just win, Kev. <laughs> you just win. That is the, the best way to look at it. Meanwhile, you can see Lucas now taking a lot of damage here on the second stock. A little bit of a turnaround for Corinne as they manage to find a good lead in damage percentage. And a lot of this fight taking place in center stage. And honestly, I think this map actually favors Corinne as Lucas can really hold their own off stage. As you can see right now, Corinne kind of forcing that issue, but putting Lucas back towards the center stage again. And Lucas really struggling to even the odds here. Looks still in the position where he can try to survive, but ooh hoo That well-timed ball of water and electricity does enough for the stun to launch him out of there. But Makipo, you know, taking a bunch of damage, not able to dish it out as evenly. Stock advantage naturally is going to help them out, but they've got to put down a bit more before they can, you know, forego their own, or perhaps they can maintain the entirety of the stage control? No, I was going to get back on, but... Our ceilings here are very high. Yep, meanwhile, you can see once again that Lucas does manage to recover. Although they're playing from an entire stock down, they have a lot of catching up to do. And that up smash will put them at one stock apiece, but still 80% damage. Nothing, nothing to wave a stick at as Corinne already going right back to business and dealing even more damage. He needs to find a way to get back on stage, though, and yeah, that's not happening. Straight pins her down. I was about to say, was that Corinne's down tilt? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, that's what it looked like to me, but, it, you know, Captain always be Captain, so I never really know. That's but what, what, I, what I do know 
Is that right now? The spike looks like it's going to try and go down on the B side, but no. You're not yeah. going to be able to get it done. Ale was there from South Mac to, to put those, ho those hopes down quick, fast, and in a hurry. And now, mm -hmm. finally, Haste Nate will also be gunned down. And South Mac, take another round. Yeah, that's just what's not happening anymore, honestly. Uh, in the position that he was in. So, better leave and start with JT Williams and South Mac. You know, where... JT Williams is now on the come up. They have guns in their hands. They weren't able to find anything for the for, for the past two or seven previously. South Mac needed these next two pistols. But this is the true test. It lasts a lot. Now with Spectres aboard and a classic for Ale. Uh, trying to hold out the aggression from JT. It's gotta come down to just them playing super safe or just complete most plans. Well, let's see how they're going to get the job done. As you can see, Spike just hovering there towards mid slowly. Looks as though they're looking to go to B. Nothing committed just yet besides the KO dagger. That goes out far and wide. Not coming down with any information. The Owl Drone also gunned down. Making not a lot of use of these utilities so far. Does get a mask. Not able to get the head click, though. Looking to follow up and just dancing the dozy do here in the mid lane. Meanwhile, Indigo looking to plant on B, but gets shaken off by the Nano Swarm. Tough calls, but no one falling is the biggest, uh, I was going to say, accomplishment. Never mind. Moss has just been able to clear all of Kitchen by themselves. Maybe South Mech in a 2v4 now, as they finally get caught, but they've done enough damage, but JT Williams just has to hold on. One enemy remaining. Well, well, there you have it. I mean, all they really had to do was let Spike tick away, but no, Indigo from Yellow, along with Haste Nate, were able to get the final two eliminations, and now they find themselves with their first round win of the second half. Nice stuff as well. Big shout out to Moss for being able to catch the type three of those players that we're playing with take. But I thought the Mac at least with guns in their hands too is should be able to put up a should be able to put up a much better fight from what we saw previously. Positioning right now is still continuing to be pretty default from what we experienced at standard spike. for every single Icebox composition. Enemy marked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no wall put up, though. Yeah, not just yet. We're going to see what we can do here. Again, JT Williams were able to get a successful plant and round win onto B, but do they want to do it again? Let's see. Shy Sheep now going to be putting down the Viper wall, confirmed over towards the B site. And the Spike also making its way in tow. So 5v5 though. Wall needs to be put down to get a safe plant and there it is. As a covering indigo, so resulting in a net positive for themselves. It's Moss once again coming around on the flank. They're watching the angle this time and alright, say catches it all, but is it gonna be enough? So 3v3, all they're playing off site. Yep, that they are, and that Owl Drone does give them a little bit of intel. Meanwhile, one player does go down from JT Williams, and the trade is there. It's a 2v2. No attempts made on the spike just yet. They're still allowing it to take away. Finally, audio cue does come from the fake defuse. Not able to stick it. Still a 2v2 scenario, and they bait out both, and they get both. But is there enough time left? This is going to be closed down to the last wire, and no. Ooh. JT Williams, by the skin of their teeth, managed to come away with the round win. They had it so, so crucially. But they will, you know, at least ensure that now up at match points, 5v5, res, and lockdown available. Man, but just, just seconds, seconds allowing that. I mean, it could have been... You know, all tw uh, an 11 to 5 for South Mac, and they could have probably made it more. 
Yep, that was just oh so close. And the fantastic swing there at the end. A nice bait and switch in order to pull both players out to get the eliminations. But there was just too much time gone from the spike. And now, once again, we're headed over towards B. And the attacker, Killjoy, now goes out. Marcus Fury as well to possibly get one. Indigo gets taken down. That's res gone. A big first pick as well. But haste made and still will find the trade. Taking up the Viper on the defense. And Moss gets another, more than likely. Moss, man. It's a timing there. Crucial looking to push more. As they do, they get checked. They hear the footsteps. And this could just be it. It's the last two members here, Cap. One enemy and that's, that's it. Yeah, they're done. So, GG's. Oh, oh, oh no. I got to tell you, Mass definitely coming through for JT Williams in a massive way. No pun intended. Or was it? Regardless, a fantastic round going the way of JT Williams. They come through with a dub there on Icebox with literally no time left to spare. I mean, you could see clearly that the opposition was in the makings of a pretty decent comeback. Indeed it was, but uh, as of right now, we have to come back after this break a little bit for more games. See you soon. Bye for now.
Homies, welcome on back once again. This is and Capital and Smash, and that's that. Da -da 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 -da. Eh. 
Yeah, that was my, my drawn out intro. You know how I do the hand flip and point thing? Yeah, at that time I was just like drawing it out for for funsies. But speaking of funsies, we have Butler versus a Garinger. Now keep in mind, Butler is also one of our teams that are currently three and zero, and they're looking to hang on to their undefeated streak. As they go up against Garinger right now, currently on a set, and it looks like the split is going at 9-2 and two in the favor of Butler. Should be able to do so as I believe they turn the entire ascent map sepia more than it honestly is. I able to the use to get this, but this is fascinating. Either way, uh, there are all five up right now for Garinger as you look to us about 9-3-1 One already going down on the side of Butler. They gotta find more tactics to, to slow them down. A lot of damage already put on to the next side of the team, but Garinger, their Sova is just oh so low. A straight bullet could take him, but as of right now, they have made their way onto the site. Yep, they have, and you know what they say, it all goes down in the boatyard, and as a matter of fact, the spike has gone down in the boatyard. Meanwhile, the KJ ult comes out, and Wingman! Where are you going, little homie? Where are they running? Wingman did come out. I, I saw it. I swear. He did. That's true. He was there. He was there right now. He did get spotted. A nice dart to just, to just signify and lay out the land of the entire site. But one does get detained. The rest of the members do come in from Butler. That's what they needed. The big old fault line as they all fall in. But they need to be on trade angle stacked up one after the other. And that speed to take so many rams after being detained finally already walks in but they've got no time to defuse the spike i mean i just felt like that was just just flexing at that point like i mean you couldn't get the spike the spike had ticked away already but you know what we're gonna catch bodies you know we're gonna get the eliminations we're gonna frag out and you know what that's exactly what butler did so even though they ended up losing the round they still go into the second half with a seven round lead and that dreaded nine three curse looming for garinger one after the next just keeps on happening there's a uh heard something from a uh, producer that that what you say to us Say it one more time, please. Okay, as uh, on the other side, you can see there's uh, there's Hopewell and Seek going on right now. Thank you, to, uh, thank you to producer Dad for giving us oodles and poodles information. Your Paul is wonderful. Uh, going on right now, nine three. All right, let's get it. Oh, here we go, and you can already see the Sova setting up towards B main, throws out the recon dart, but guess what? They're not going to find anything, because the entire side of Butler is over here towards A. Mm-hmm. All one in front of the other one, but as two go down, a trade that's not even, but right now, Butler seem to be at odds with what they want to do for the site. The spike can't even be planted. Only as it is, it is a 1v3, now 2, the dash up is there, he has two shots going wide. Yeah, but at least they get a little bit of money, you know, they got the spike down, they managed to come up with three eliminations on top of that, which means Garinger is going to have to rebuy, but that is a fantastic way to start things out for Garinger, especially when you're on the latter half of a 9-3 curse, so they're already getting things set in motion. Mm-hmm. One after the next, it can see just snowball forward, my friend, but they'll uh, have to see for themselves because with Garinger, as it stands for them, there should be a, there should be a pretty easy five round lead. Well, five rounds for themselves, I should say, and making it a five round differential, if anything. But for Butler, their bond, their their buy up round will be the two the two test as. The Aries sprays and one it gets. Wow. That's always fun to see. You know, that's, that's just a good time. Anytime you see the B spray go down, either with an Aries or an Odin. But when, when it happens with an Aries, there's something truly special there. Aries is nice. I use it a lot. I really enjoy it. That's one, though. Nice stuff. Can use a little can use a little homie to try to stop the push they can. The bulldog with the Rams taken away a nice flash. Kel Hoax barely finds the peak. That's now on Canty Speed. The 2v1 spike in their hands. They're rotating all the way around to B. Carney's watching them. 
This is going to be a big round win for Butler. I mean, they they already have a substantial lead, so it's not like they need it. But at the same time, you know, this is the second round, and Garinger was the one that won the pistol round, so they should have had an advantage as far as the buying power. But Butler able to get a couple of picks and then pick up a couple of Spectres, and all of a sudden they're back in contention here in round number fifteen. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. or rather, round fourteen, mm -hmm. um, Kariu. Now going to have to drop from heaven and hopefully find someone lurking. And they do. One left, but Ooh. they can't get it. And the thrifty will go to Butler. Can't teach speed. Easy peek out, out from any position as they were looking to play off of one another. Watch it by the door. And I was thinking that with the angle that he was at, if Sova doesn't actually get peeked up by heaven, he could have actually paid the post plat because the shock darts and the angle that he had. But nonetheless... Brown still in their hands, and it'll now also force Garanger on a full save, so Butler can't snowball it even further. You know what they can, and I like that they're bringing the Odin to B main just to try and return the favor that Kalos was delivering to them prior while banging through the wall again with the with the Ares. This time, they're going to have to face down an Odin, as you can see Kalos in a pretty colossal situation as they will be gunned down as well. Meanwhile, Rams now going all the way Ooh. long here, but... Is forced to back off after taking some substantial damage, and still Ooh. they get not one but two back to back of limbs there. Now they're hoping to get the full ace that gets denied. Oh, Bob Keepo sees it first. And Butler, what a round from them. Dominance abroad. But Garinger finally having the tools to perhaps put things more in their favor. Yeah, that was a fantastic round coming from Butler. But although Garinger was forced on a save, so there's really not a lot that they could have come with there in order to, to kind of counterpick. But with that being said, we are now going into our next round where Garinger should have themselves a full buy and should be able to put up a much better fight against Butler. Mm-hmm. Rishi puts up the mosh pit. Slows him down for a decent amount. But... The dash in, the classic push. Nothing to be planted, though, is it'll be a 5v4. But Keepa finds another. And he gets checked up by Heaven. If Rams pushes this, uh, he might be able to find one more, but instead gets checked himself. Uh, Karyu comes out on top. And Karyu not to walk in as... Oh, damn. Unboard. Now, you see, this is going to be a real predicament for Garinger because be, uh, being that they did not take that last round i'm wondering if they have enough money or economy to even come through with a solid buy going into this next round going into round 17 butler however on match point with plenty of economy and uh should have themselves in a completely full buy so this is this is a really tough spot for garinger yeah they need to do something here like, they've been caught out so early on previously, and now as it stands, they have the Empress and the Orbital Strike, but... Ooh, pinned out so early. Empress gone. And they can get the Null Dart. They can get the Null Dart off of this, too. They see Rishi as well pushing out a main. And game is around the side. Use the Orbital Strike to push them all back, but only for a couple of seconds. Meanwhile, Rishi does, she does get caught trying to swing on them. And there's rest there too. It's this. It's GG, man. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 a four v two. You know, I mean, it's still doable. Garinger still has one hope left alive. And you know, a hope sometimes is all you need. Let's see if they can get the job done. As Kalos now heading back over towards A to Tree, but no, it will be Mupkeepo to get the last elimination there for Butler as they will take the win on ascent. Mhm. Mm as we head on to our penultimate game of Valorant for the night with Seek and Hopewell. Seek, we were talking about previously. Uh, as, uh, as Seek is, uh, you know, it's in a pretty good spot in terms of standings. Yeah, Seek has Hopewell. managed to accomplish a lot. Mostly, they accomplished my, um, my former um, interpretation of the letter C. So they managed to definitely change my views in that regard. But other than that, they managed to get at least one round win here on the board. And now looking to try and solidify another as Hopewell are managing to take this spike all the way over towards the A site and should be able to get the plan off. And they do. Ah.
5v5, so. Seek looking to find the way in with a thrash they couldn't. Use that to just delay them, and yep, yeah, there we go. There. They force the gravity well to, to get them off of the site. Hope well. Oh, there's continuing to delay farther as they do get checked. Two different corners in, in terms of cross angle. Oh, Warren delay. It's just one person left, and Neo has to look to stop this, but they have no time, and that's it. They do enough delaying. Hope well. And you have to lose everybody. Clutch the round. Oh, yeah, that was insanely clutch. And, you know, and I'm actually surprised that Mosh did not get thrown out. Or rather, you know, they didn't really have the time to throw them out. I mean, and that's really all you needed was one solid Molly snake bite. Whatever you could get onto the spike was really all that you needed. But, honestly, they were just able to get it done from the good old-fashioned head clicks. Did it the old-fashioned way and was able to frag out to get the dub. And now Hopewell sitting comfortable here with a six-round lead over Seek. I think the timeout is very much needed right now for Seek. That's an interesting bug. Never seen that before. Eh, too cool. Hmm. <laughs> well, meanwhile, we're getting back into the action with some smash. And you can see right now, Catway going to be able to recover with the get up. But the back air coming from BLF Trick. Is going to turn the tables here on Star Fox. Yeah. I've seen a Fox in quite some time, I'd say, but it is uh, it is up against a, a more fun sorties, I'd say. He's, I find he's one of the easier ones to, to be able to, you know, uh, manage up against, right? So that's that's been nice. But I'm 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 blanking on the name, but he's I remember he's faster out of like the. Faster out of uh, at the Marth and so on, blue sword combinations. I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty. I don't know who that sword user was. I mean, I know who they were, but I can, for the life of me, cannot remember their name right now. And as far as Star Fox is concerned, you, you, you're seeing more wolf picks lately than Star Fox. Jeez. It's fine. What matters instead is that we can focus instead on Valorant. Of the names of the ages that we do know. <laughs> because they're only like 20. Thank God. If that. I feel like it's actually less than 20. <laughs> but regardless. Here we are. On our way. A beautiful read. Coming out from Gray. In order to get that head click. And now the spike continuing to take away. And Hopewell. Looking oh so strong here in round 9. It's 5v4 between these two teams. Hopewell. Once again playing off this side. Waiting for Seek to walk in. It's gray, they're just holding it down. Sees one up top. One and with two more members maintaining their positioning, all the entrances and exits are covered. Nothing more can be done about this. And I like the fact that we're using our evil voices. Let the darkness consume you. <laughs> we're just becoming Emperor Palpatine. Yeah, that's what I was going for, actually. <laughs> that's great. I ain't gonna lie. If I was in this sub, I I don't know this. What do what do you even call this structure? It it, it would be some aquatic area, uh, aquarium. Regardless of what you would call it, if I was at the bottom of the ocean, protected by this air bubble, I would be absolutely terrified. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's like uh, it's like what Sandy has to do, right? Should yeah, just survive. Yeah, but. I mean, I don't know about you, but humans can't breathe underwater, so it's no. nice to be. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, we're getting round number 10 underway now, and it looks as though the spike is going to be heading over towards B-Long. No objections here, as this should be a decent read, although they do have to get past at least one wall. And now look at all the wall bangs on poor Bean Salad Man. Literally Ooh. one hit at this Ooh. point, and they can't escape. They don't get away. Yeah, the leader gets shot out in time, so... Not able to run out, but it'll leave a little homie to get the plant down. And as they do, they have been able to see that three of them are looking to enter through mid here. You can hear four v three as soon as this, as soon as that smoke does dissipate. The gecko actually slime doesn't get any information on them either, but a dog does. And now you can see I lost. 
There's an interesting choice of name there from the up top, from the top rope. Does get smoked off by the Astra. And now Gray, the next on the chopping block to get gunned down. As you can see, Night Raven going to swing along with the Jet to try and find the corners. But no, they get flanked by the Gecko. And now only Night Raven remains. And they too will be gunned down, giving hope while yet another round win. Three we the three v none by the end of it. Hope well brings things back. And these post fight positions are just so good from them too. How they're able to find exactly where Seas wants to look to push in. They smoke that off, and then from there as well, they have a clean array of angles that are playing across the site, almost like a B shape. And they got it all covered down. And with that, he just cannot walk in. So. They'll, they'll, that'll force them to just brute force their way in and try to fight their way through playing off, playing off a contact instead as right now. Oh, well, it's gamble stacking towards B. A C2, as, as the wall goes up, they're just aggressively pushing. Yeah, and right now this poor Viper having to use literally all of their util just to stop the aggression coming from Hopewell. As now you can see the Empress does get popped, but finally, finally the Calvary does arrive, but is it too late? Mm, it may not be necessarily. Oh, -hoo! easy dissipate gray with three. The Empress doing so much work. That was a very fast round. Last round before the switch. It was. <laughs> and there's our little wingman. You see the little wingman right there? Up oh, there. I know yeah. he's gone. The little homie doing his thing. That's all good. It's all good. I'm sure. I'm sure we'll find him. Well, okay. as we get ready to head into round number 12, mm -hmm. it's going to be the last round in the half here and the last opportunity for Seek to end on a good note Ooh. as we get ready to get this last round on the way and then head into the second half where it will be Seek's turn to try and take a chance on the offensive side of the spike. So let's see how they do uh, concluding this first half here on Pearl. Mm. Familiar to push the will be experience pretty before, but okay. What a star off blind blind spray works out and being solid about this time, not playing far up, able to disappear into halls, but gets checked so quickly. Got hopeful, it's just so good with their actual gunplay, but slow committing to this site. Reaver Scrubby, they, they find one more and. They're going to leave him behind while they rotate. This is good. Yeah, this is going to be one heck of a rotate. I mean, I'm pretty sure Capri Sun knows uh, that the jig is up, but still, you're going to see two anchors there over towards the B site. Nobody making the rotation. And look at this. The spike from Hopewell. It's already pretty much there. Where are you? Yeah. It's managed to run all the way over to, to the other site. Free plant. Mm-hmm. Watching on the corners, though. Kali got to be careful, catch his timing on the captain, uh, uh, on the Capri Sun, but it's that it's, it's Astral who does exactly that. Lockdown now, there's 2v2, Kali around the corner. Oh, but cannot find the pick, but the lockdown is enough of an actual delay tactic, if anything. And they do, of course, have the mollies there to slow them down, but oh, Killjoy out of the open gets taken. Yeah, and that's a real feels bad, especially when you commit an entire ultimate to it and, you know, can't come through. Meanwhile, that is going to be another round win for Seek and a huge one it was. They need every single round that they can get. Meanwhile, we're watching Jigglypuff take on Donkey Kong, literally the squishiest of the squishy, going up against one of the heaviest of the heavy. It's been 10 twos, man, across the board. It's crazy. Like, we, uh, we, uh, we've we pretty much only seen, like, 9 threes and 10 twos pretty much the entire day today. So, fascinating so far. But the trend has been, you know, you, you, you use the team with two, catch the pistols, and from there, we're vibing. But I do not know if a seat can put out that same result. Meanwhile, it's two big old balls, one of fur and one of pink, fighting it out. Yeah, and you know what? I absolutely love Jigglypuff. I actually had somebody ask me, I'm like, you know, Atsoka, how do you feel about Jigglypuff? And I'm like, bro, I mean, is there any other option? Is your puff even jiggly, bro? Does your puff even jiggle, bruh? Like, keeping it at a buck fifty, Jigglypuff is where it's at. Puff is cool. 
But the also the thing is that Puff is also very annoying as well. Which is why Puff players are not fans. Uh, well, no one's fan of Puff players in general, but either way. Puff almost survives and that's two taken. Gray with three dome pieces. Put it out of 3v2, complete chaos on the site. I lost, even things up, even Mosh getting one. But Hopewell comes out on top. Yeah, and then Donkey Kong absolutely backhanded Jigglypuff to the Oblivion and was able to take that round. And speaking of, we are heading into our next round. And you can see Hopewell not only one away from being on match point, and they have themselves quite a stackable buy. Looking pretty strong right now for Hopewell. Seek, however... Is going to have to maybe try and get a force buy or a full save. They don't seem quite sure themselves mm -hmm. on how they want to approach round number 14. Mm -hmm. That's right, my friend. Meanwhile, we do, of course, have the other battle match going on as of right now as well. To see what transpires between them on Haven. But I am happy to see that, you know, there it is. Uh, so a decent variety. The fracture we saw was crazy. Or, and it seems as though that Haven just simply is not what people prefer. I like the Pearl pick as well, but nonetheless, Spike looking to be planted by a neutral. I see all off site. Yeah, too many swarm nades there. Too much heat on the bogey. If you want to try and get the plan off, no, they're going to have to settle for a, for a rotation here. But no, they're still here on B main. They're not going anywhere. And Reaver is going to try and uh, pick them off here with the Spectre, but not going to be giving too much shoulder away. Remember, if you give out too much shoulder, you end up under a boulder. Mm. What? I just Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, uh, all right, man. Sure. Uh, you know what? It's okay. Uh, Goose finds one though. Prime flank positioning. And I was gonna wait around to see if anybody pushes against him. Because if you look at the actual over area to control, Hopewell is just stuffing Seek out of any options that they might have. And that'll be the last of Flawless as they push to match point. Yeah, that they do, but keep in mind, this is going to be a full buy coming from Seek. So now is a better time than any for Seek to start their comeback against Hopewell, because Hopewell not going to be able to come through with a full buy this time around. That's going to be the toughest part as well, when you're not able to have enough firepower on the attacking side, especially in a round that counts for so much. And to leave them in a really disadvantageous position, but Hopewell, as they've... Uh... As you see, inspectors galore, but they've they've come back and done worse with worse, in fact. And maybe that sediment might carry through. It's that it's a push up down B long. Nobody is seen just yet as they're all going through doors through mid. There's no util there either. This is a free open plant into B. That it is, and that looks like a KJ flanking from Hopewell. Very interesting choice for the flank, if I'm correct, but, you know, captain be captain, so who knows. It does mm -hmm. look like a KJ to me, so interesting choice to go for the deep flank here. And you know what? You're absolutely right. This is a completely free B site, so not sure what happened with the communication uh, for Seek there, as you will see Capri Sun does get a free pick out there in mid. The start off is huge. Remember, Seek wants to continue to hold off for as long as they can, but... At the site held to a T, no ultimates either from Hopewell, so it's gonna have to be just a three stack. Just walk in, playing off a of contact. This managed to slime one, but that's over by a halt. Capri Sun is watching it, and they literally also shot it as well. Gray gonna use the dissipate to walk into the person. He survives. I lost. Is now gone up on heaven. It's a two v two, and the rest of them can look to walk in and clear out the rest of the site. But they're running out of time with the rest. Capri Sun finds the transfer. As Spike is taken down, it's Neo gets a 1v1. He's still going to have to defuse, and I do not think he can is the issue. No, he can't. Mm, yeah, no, nah, that's going to be a nah. That's not, that's, I mean, it was pretty much over even before the Reyna was eliminated. There really was not a lot of time left on that Spike. As now you can see, Seek being able to take advantage of that full buy is able to hold on. But now hope well. Looking to end things here and now. Not necessarily having enough purchase power to come through with the full buy. So they're going to either have to try and scrape something together or 
Go with somewhat of a half buy. You know, go ahead and half buy it now. Get your save in and try and clutch it out. Remember, sometimes you got to give a round to get around. Yeah, you want? Sure, I agree. You do got to go, go round to get around town. It's that it'll be this, uh, also the Isabel versus the Donkey Kong matchup. Uh, interesting that Isabel is a villager, but mm -hmm. different. She's one of the villagers in Animal Crossing and does very similar things, except I don't know if she plants a tree, though. I don't know either. I feel like she does. It looks like she's trying to plant a tree right now, all the while fishing for Donkey Kong. Throwing out the fishing rod, but is going to answer back, and they currently have a stock advantage. But you will see trades already being made here towards Art on Pearl. Yeah, similar movesets either way. A one for one taken. See, though, that's the, that's the point they are in. Do not want to lose their Viper. As I say that, they lose their Viper. <laughs> Whoops. And this makes oh, this makes the plant much much harder along with the post as well. A nice little theft will surmise all their positions. It'll put in a two v none. Thirteen three for Hopewell to see. Yep, and a fantastic game played by Hopewell. But now we're heading back to Huff High, taking on North Mech here on Haven. Some familiar territory. This is where we, we had our first game, if I'm not mistaken. You are correct, my friend. We, we traversed across into all the lands to end up back here once again. And Huff for the 5 will start on the attack on its own is quite impressive, looking to make it 6 on the site they go. The Astro Wall there for all the cover as the Sage is moving up, passive spawn, it's a 4v5. I say on the site, but ooh -hoo. making that 4. Yeah, and that was actually quite the cheeky peek coming from North Mac over the over the wall there. But keep in mind, time ticking away on the spike. They're going to have to do more than just get some cheeky peeks. They're going to have to push and force the issue to push Huff High off of their site. They now have full control over C. Spike is planted and still not any pushes coming from North Mac as they are down to their last two players. 4v2, but Mizu looking to push out, finds another. Oh, Miz Pain was able, wasn't able to pass it much more than unfortunately. And 6 0 is the score. Dominance continuing for themselves. Yeah, 6 to nil right now in the favor of Huff High. And they have all the buying power. And we saw it for a moment. Don't take it away and pretend like we didn't see that. They were hovering over the operator. Then switch back to the Phantom. I would have loved to see it, but Huff High, they're not quite there yet. You have to ease your way into the operator. You don't just bust it out willy-nilly. The ultimate for the, for, the, for the side of North Mech, though. Using the alternate from the Phoenix would be nice. But one push shot. Ooh, -hoo. a bold strap by the Sage when they heard a ton coming through here. And on a 5v4, the post plan for North Mech once again seems dim. They're going to have to use Phoenix self to get out of the site, try to see where, where the rest of them are. But Phoenix is coming around through main. And you got two in heaven right now, coming from the side of North Mac, but they're getting gunned down oh so quickly. And now the paranoia goes up, but it doesn't hit its mark. Unfortunate, feels bad. Mizu, now down low, trying to find a read on this Omen, who's kind of just dancing on the windowsill at the moment. Teleports and goes nowhere. That is a feels bad. I'm making a 5v2. But yeah, they they know they gotta save, so. Just gonna be another round win for Huff High. As now we get ready mm -hmm. to head into round number eight in the economy. Definitely going to be going the way of Huff High. They have absolutely dominated so far and they're and they're looking to continue to do so. Although North Mech, I think, have enough for a full buy this time around. If not, it's definitely uh, should be a force buy. As you can see, the full shields are coming out. Three vandals, one stinger. Oh, no. They have enough for the phantom now. And uh, Mia Payne. Not sure what they're going to be going with. Looks like they're just going to stick with the good old classic. Mm. 
You know, honestly, that's all you need. It's a free gun. And that is, uh, F-R-E is, is my favorite four-letter word in the English language. So, oh, much more. You walk in, we go. Hard to fear to walk in. Miss Payne, I think, might have, uh, had some connection issues, unfortunately. So, it'll leave them now to take over the site completely. And yeah, once again, it's coming down to the Omen being the last player standing for North Mac as Huff High have a pretty good control of the site. Meanwhile, Soulbound with a huge flank is able to find one, looking to find another. But now Huff High know exactly where Soulbound is. They do find another elimination. Hold the phone. It's not over yet. 2v1 this time. They've got... A lot of hope and some options. One out of the open. Francis shuts down the options. Ooh. Up high, eight, no conceding forward. Yep, and the money continues to pile up now for Huff High. As North Mac do have a little bit of purchase power. They got a, they got a little bit to work with, but it's the ultimates where they are definitely winning here in round number nine. They got four ready to go. Meanwhile, you can see for Huff High, they are just around the corner from getting three of their own, but they're not quite there yet. Yeah, it's a little bit of a precarious position still. And I'm sure they want to shot the snowball as much as anybody else, but... As they are right now, might not be able to once again, a lot of tools still in their hands. It's a clear, a close, C3 there, and I think you gotta rotate after this, and yeah. I mean, that's what happens when you usually extend a lot of utility, or rather, you cause a lot of use, uh, utility to be called in. Uh, now you have an opportunity, a window, to go and rotate back around. But meanwhile, you can see all of the utility from Cypher is just lined up and waiting on the seaside as that rotation from North Mac is underway. As they just run on in. Uh, there's, two couple, there's two gone here, but make it 3v4. The Sage Res is there as well, but they're... All playing in inside cubby. Hmm. Thirty seconds left. All they gotta do is just uh, all they gotta do is spray down the spike, which they have not been able to plant just yet. But we're gonna see the push against them. Yeah. Nice neural theft too, as to not kind of bite on the fake. Uh, and now you can see time continuing to wind down, and Huff High really don't have. Uh, a good chance of getting the spike down. They're just going to have to try and frag out. But the spike is making its way up towards B. Do they have enough time to get the plant off? I can't, I don't, I can't even tell. I want to say yes because the game's still going on. It's 1v2. You're right. Well, technically, it seems to be 1v1 as right now. But it's moving all the way around. It's water. Look at the scope out where he is. That's Hunter's Fury available. He checks all the close angles. There's only one more left to see. And it's a fake. They know it is. What do you got to time to swing out? It is on point. And it's Echo. To, to close things out. Yeah, that it is. And again, it's just another feels bad for North Mech. And it's the second time that we have seen a player either disconnected, AFK, or whatever the case may be. And it's, it's so disappointing when that happens. And you can't help but feel for North Mech in this situation. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's tough, and as I spoke about before, just connectivity issues do happen from time to time, so we do want to hope that the player can make it back in if they can, but either way, nonetheless, we are now in this position that where we want to ensure and hope that North Mac can, are, able to get, are able to get something back here. Yeah, meanwhile, checking back in with some of our Smash players, you can see Star Fox currently having that one stock lead over Lucas and nearly being able to lap them entirely. As a matter of fact, they currently have, and Lucas struggling to find themselves back on stage, but managed to do so. As you can also see, round number 10, well and underway here on Haven. Yes, sir. Hard to three put out early on. Two taken by him. 
Make it a 3v2 right now on this site. One more shot. The op is clean. And North Mech. This is their round to win. They can do this. It's a 1v1. And Huff, if they can find the timing here on top of them. Oh, he could do it, but no. Spike in his hands. And they don't even get that down. I mean, do they even need it? I mean, I, I, mean, I guess they know that Sage is AFK. So, I, I mean, I guess maybe they did it for the, uh, the, for the financial game. bonus. Yeah. Yep, just another, really nothing you can do about it, honestly, when you're a player down. So, I mean, you could really try your best, but at the end of the day, when you're going up against a squad like Huff High, I don't expect them to take it easy on you because, you know what, neither would I. Yep, yeah, because uh, this is a it's tough competition and you know everybody wants to win, right? So that's kind of just kind of just the short and long of it uh, uh, when, when it comes down to it. Anyways. All good. How high now? A lot of ultimates available for their side too. Let's see if they decide to use any off the rip. It's a big ping from the dart. Yep, big old ping, and now out goes the big old owl drone as the location does get revealed. And now they're just hovering around in the smoke, not quite making the push, and it looks as though the rotation will now go underway, and they're forced to back off of this C-site. Yeah, they, they instead decide it's a, lot, it's a lot easier to rotate. They notice all the aggression, plus the tripwires too. They get caught out early on. The A-site is completely open. And instead, they'll look to make the slow walking right now. They haven't cut noise completely. But the Omen has repositioned to at least put up a bit more aggression so far. Sees the smokes to come down with the stars. And I hear is where they can get the plant down. The Astro Wall goes up for Huff High as they see one more person there. Yep, they see the Omen and the Omen goes down. And you know what? The spike also goes down on the A site. And there's a big flank coming from North Mac, but they get pointed out and gunned down. As the flank will be denied, and now, mm -hmm. once again, only the AFK Sage remains. Yep. Unfortunato, once again, 11 Oh, that we got going on for them. And there's only one more round left in this half here, Cap. So, it's, uh, it seems though a 13 0 might be on the horizon. It very well could be. Meanwhile, we're checking in back with some of the smash action, and you can see Cloud taking on Falco and nearly being able to get the first stock, but Falco, trying to recover, is able to turn things around. Not all the way, but there it is! The down air is able to get the first spike off of Cloud. Mm-hmm. Did I say first spike? What did I just say? I think you said the first spike, but also strike, but both. My bad. Which is okay. Again, that's what happens when you cast Valorant and Smash at the same time. You know, the first yeah. stock off of Cloud. There's a lot going on. That's okay. But Kid Fuya has uh, the showstopper going a little bit of wire for themselves, but as they all center themselves around mid, but I'm making a trade of one for one. Nice shot, soul bound to come all the way around a three piece with the sheriff. But now comes an all command looking to push against him. The 2v1 for the KO. Doesn't even see him though. At least not 13 0. I like it. Yeah, Soulbound definitely not going to be taking this, this loss lying down. They are striking back in a major way and, of course, are currently top fragging for the side of North Mech. Meanwhile, we check back in with Cloud taking on Falco. Falco still up one stock, getting ready to absolutely lap. Uh, or actually already has lapped Cloud, but Cloud, again, finally being able to strike back, and it seems as though they might be able to try and get at least one more stock off of Falco. They are in the red, they are in the danger, and that will do it. They get all the way sent to the blast zone, and now it is one stock apiece. Mm, with the Cloud, it already charged up at all. A 75, the Falco can just close this out. Remember, they are a bit heavier than the Fox, but it's just going to be about spacing, which Cloud is doing more than enough of. At this time, Huff High is a side switch on over the pistols. And right now on North Mech's side, the Paranoia to get one 
as they don't push off of it. And again, sometimes it's slow and steady that wins the race, and you can see Soulbound able to find one. Looking to get two, but gets gunned down in the process. And speaking of, Falco was also able to take their game against Cloud. And unfortunately, again, it's that lone Sage AFK. So that's going to be another round going the Huff High and match point. Ah. Indeed, my friends. Should be it as a Falco. You know, takes the dub. She's running back against him and Mario. The first thing that I thought when I saw that Mario skin is Monopoly Mario. That's fair. You know what? That's what it makes it's me think. That, yeah. It does have the monocle, though. The only thing is missing. I, I think he does have a stopwatch, I believe. Like somewhere like in one of his pockets, I think. But yeah, pocket either way. Watch. Yeah, that's that's the one. That's it. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> uh, but I'll find out on their bonus. With one more round left to go, all they gotta do is close things out. And North Mac just got just gotta play things through. Yep, and considering that this is the second round of the second half, you can pretty much assume North Mac uh, not looking too good in terms of weaponry. Where it is, it is going to be a few specters there. And now a bulldog coming from the side of Huff High as they do get traded out, but it will be another elimination. And now, too, going the way of Huff High as the spike does get planted on the C site. And now yet another elimination for Soulbound here as they try and hold on, but it won't be enough, and Huff High will be able to take the game on Haven 13-1 to over North Mac. GG's, my friends. That's, uh, as we'll end things out here and now. Between them all, where we have, I believe, our final Defense. smash match of the day as well between the Falco and the Kazuya. Well, here we go, and I actually really love the Kazuya just because I love Tekken so much. But with that being said, Falco performing extraordinarily well. And you know what? Ravish, I actually want to pick your brain on something because previously what? we saw Cloud, right? Cloud, yeah. definitely one of the favorite sorties, but I have to ask, who do <clears> you <throat> think is the better sortie, Cloud or Roy? Our boy Roy. I think it's look, Roy's a lot more consistent, I wanna say. Like, you know, you know what you're getting into. Like he has just good clean damage, but Cloud I find there's a lot more technicalities removing with him. His power bar really does change things up. So if I am to put my bets on somebody, I would put it on Roy. Good answer. Good answer. Good solid answer. Thank you. I appreciate that. Because I, too, had the same take. Because Cloud, like you said, is that level of inconsistency. But with that being said, it's Falco and Kazuya this time around. And right now, Falco, with the one-stock lead, is going to try and get the ledge guard on Kazuya. But it doesn't go. And now you can see the up air does land. And Kazuya forced to recover, getting a, somewhat of a trade. But it will be the forward air to get that second stock off of Kazuya. Now it looks to be a 3-1. This Falco is absolutely dominating, but Kazuya will not take will not take things lying down. A lot of damage put down, but should just be in between the two of them. Oh, instead, Kappa the ledge guard recovers pretty easily and switches over so quickly as well. But this could be the dunk. Oh, doesn't find it. Recovers back up, but this Falco playing things excellently. Yep, that they are. A nice little up tilt there, but couldn't follow it up with the up air. And now the return, the rebuttal coming from Kazia trying to force Falco off stage. But Falco simply isn't having it. But look at the down throw coming from Kazia. Dealing a massive amount of damage, but they still have to try and find this uh, second stock in order to make things a little more even. Yeah, it's... Except both of them are actually pretty high, too. And oh... Percentage, nice big hit once again. Got to stop like that twice at this point, but Kazuya's at 121. Can he hold on is a question. Can he find it? Because Kazuya a juggle. Nope, that's it. Yep, nice little up smash to end the game. Honestly, couldn't tell if that was an up smash or up tilt. It looked like an up smash, though. That's sure. what it looked like. So again, Falco able to come out on top, get the dub, and get the win over Kazuya. In a pretty spectacular fashion as we get ready to now to head into a matchup of Ganondorf versus Captain Falcon. And this is 
a hundred percent that was the penultimate smash match of the day and this is the final smash match of the day team rosa dev and the mellow the heaviest swordy versus this guy who has catchphrases for his for his moves hey don't be don't don't be sleeping on my favorite uh, smash player there although the recovery was was not there captain falcon oh. in my opinion is uh, one of the better brawlers also one of the most balanced smash characters in the yeah, game but, yeah but who cares about being balanced i want my Me. characters to be absolutely giga op so i can get free wins against my friends I Oof. mean, it looks like that's happening right now because this Ganon is going absolutely bonkers <laughs> onto Andy Mello right now. Yeah, Ganon is ruining everything, all the plans that they had. Like, for for the first two stocks, he took 14% of the damage. Uh, so, and this looks to be a three stock in hand. As long as they could just continue to get some damage down. But Andy Mello finally finding some control in space. What they're hoping for exactly that. Can't find the edge guard, but. This is nice. Ooh, controlling the pace of the game completely. Yeah, it's just back-to-back -back throws right now coming from Captain Falcon, but whatever works for you, that's what you got to stick with. As another forward throw is going to land, and now being able to dodge the heavy is able to get what looked to be an up tilt. Yeah. And missing the Falcon just... kick, unfortunately. Oh. Oh. Jumps over one, but oh, wanted to get... Oh, he wanted to get the smackdown. Couldn't do so. No dunk here. Survive for a couple more seconds, but 113 to 87. Goes off stage pretty far, recovers beautifully, but Captain Falcon has the opportunity to get the stock instead. No dunk for him. Andy Mello. Hard to find a big old punch, but I don't think he's going to get the opportunity. And what you see the thing about Ganon is that, yeah, you got 130 on him, but it's going to take a lot more than that. As you yeah. can see, it was the back air to land onto Captain Falcon, getting the final stock and getting the win for Ganondorf. Indeed, my friends, and that brings us to the end of our day as per usual for the CMS Esports League. I want to thank you all for tuning in once again. Big shout out to production, our TOs, and for you all for watching and for all the high schools who compete so consistently within this league. Remember, we've got a lot more league to go and a lot more games to be had. We'll be back here next week, same time, same place. I've been Ravish Driver, Stats Captain Atsoka. We'll catch y'all later. Peace.